Okay, I'm going to call the Loudoun County Commission workshop to order for October 17, 2022. For those who know me, I don't like to start late, but the budget committee meeting at the county building ran late, so we're behind just a little bit. <laughs> First up is comments by the general public. Harvey Spruill. Sprout. Sprout. Sorry. Close enough. I recognize who that is. For those of you who, uh, who don't know me, I have been around for a while yet, but I'm not really a, a uh, original member of this county, but of uh, Knox County. But when I came out of the Army, I came here and uh, began practicing law. The th excuse me, the things that were, were different then, because that was uh, in 1961, we didn't have Fort Latin, new Fort Latin Bridge, we didn't have uh, Elko Village, we didn't have Highway 321, we didn't have uh, a lot, but I could see right off the bat that uh, we needed to have a county that was well ready to meet some of the questions that were going to come up. Uh, for, for example, well, I, 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 before I got elected to be a county judge, I was I practiced law, and of course, I, you you learn a lot there for sure. But I could see that uh, you didn't have uh, subdivisions. Uh, as uh, uh, according to the book, uh, you had a developer who could just buy a piece of land and go and uh, grade in a gravel road or driveway road and uh, then start selling lots. No consideration for who uh, your other neighbors were or. Uh, who was going to have to put the roads in later or some of the other things that come with having regulations that you have to set up what each of these things would be. Um, Telco Village again was not in, in uh, was just in a gleam in the eye so to speak. TVA proposed to build a new model city. Uh, at the same time, they were flooding however many tens of thousands of uh, uh, flood plains that there would be, and uh, they would have to put back the roads and other facilities that they might take. We wanted them to have to put back something that would meet the new specifications, we needed new specifications, rather than them putting back just the same thing that they had. So I discussed with my county uh, court, back then it was a court rather than a commission. Uh, they met on uh, every three months in the morning. 
to discuss what the tax rate would be and a few other things, but basically they were not really uh, doing what a, what you people are having to go through with very many things that uh, come up with that many people. So they did, when discussing, discussing of these problems, agree to get uh, regulations and we went to the state of Tennessee who was, had a department at that time that helps you get your, your uh, planning and your subdivision regulations and your uh, zoning. Of course, you know what zoning uh, is and how, how strict it is as to what you try to get to meet uh, certain goals as to where certain things are placed. You don't, you don't want uh, uh, jump yards in a certain place. You, you, all the various things that you have probably already gone through. My uh, consideration was that, that, we, that we would be able to get that passed by the county court and that we would have get a building permit uh, inspector and all the other things that go with that. And so that is one reason that the county is in as good a shape as it is and I think considered over the state of Tennessee is one of the better counties and uh, you also have uh, We've got some of the benefits because a lot of those things that we projected might come did come. And so Telco Village makes a big difference as to what the tax rate is and uh, a lot of the other things. Uh, the fact is we now have 321. We now have all of these other things that we didn't have then. And that has happened. However, it's taken over 50 years. So what's going to happen over the next 30 or 40 years? And simply, I don't want to take a lot of time uh, to go into the details because I think you know enough about what's going on in the world to, to understand that we need to think in advance as to what are the things that may happen we need to have a review of the present regulations, some of which are outdated, some of which will be embarrassing uh, if they come up and you're not able to handle it. And there's no guarantee that if you, if, even if you uh, have a review and make some changes because, and you have your public hearings and all that, and ultimately, these things were brought before you to approve or to uh, uh, make the alternate suggestions or whatever they might be. Um, my suggestion is this is not something that uh, you can get done in, uh, in the next six weeks or the next six months, but it may take quite a bit of time to do all the things that would be necessary. And that it, uh, one way to handle it would be for the county commission to appoint a committee from this, from your own group, but also to work with the planning commission and possibly with uh, uh, well-known well and uh, qualified uh, members of the public business or in, in, or in the industry. And that you start thinking about this now because it takes a while and you try to foresee that, you try to foresee for the future as to what may come. So you want to, you want to take care of everything that you can. Uh, and, and I guess this, for example, is uh, one of the, the matter that I read in the paper that Van had uh, put up for a, 
the voting, I think, vote, voted was uh, concerning uh, the number of uh, units that can be put on a um, acre. This, to me, just off the cuff, seems to me not, not to be, it seems to me to be all right. This is a, probably a good thing for you to do at this time, to stop everything and look at these regulations that are not now in force and it will take a little while to, to do it. But you want to look at the whole future of the county as it's coming up. And, the, and to predict as much as you can what is going to be needed and where it's going to be needed and what kind of land, what kind of utility. To limit forever having to put, I don't know exactly how it all works, if you put one acre, one house on one acre, or, or if you put two houses on one acre, however you, however you do that. That leaves out a lot of people. That leaves out a lot of young people who are coming back home uh, from wherever they might have been somewhere else to work or been to college. It takes, uh, takes out uh, parents of uh, people, of the younger <coughs> people that are embracing a family and do have a, a nice yard and a nice house. Uh, but the parents come back, they don't want to be mowing the yards and that sort of thing. Basically, you need to have a relook at all of the uh, regulations that are going on now and pick the ones that are good and, th and think about the things that will solve other problems that will come up as you begin to go through the process. So that's my recommendation, Mr. Chairman and members, uh, that you consider doing that. And I think that uh, I've talked with some of the other leaders uh, of the, the county that are here tonight, and they, I think, have agreed with me that uh, a, a look at the regulations is in music, is in line, should be in line to be done. And that, uh, that's my recommendation. I, I'll be glad to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Harvey. Mr. Chairman, I've got to say that uh, Commissioner Dove and I, I guess, were the only two here. He used to be our county attorney and sat right here on the table with us, and he talked kind of like that when he was a county attorney, but <laughs> I've told a lot of people, Harvey Sproul probably had more effect on how the direction of Loudoun County has gone than anybody ever. Much of it I disagree with, but he was the one that made it happen. But uh, just to answer Mr. Sproul, the Planning and Zoning Study Committee is currently doing exactly what you said. We're reviewing the entire planning document along with members of the Planning Commission. Jim Jenkins sitting in the back. So, yes, we know we have some way outdated stuff. I'm guessing you probably wrote most of it back in 40 years ago or so. So we're working on it, and we're going to try to make it better and better all the time. Thanks for coming down, Harvey. Thank you. Mitchell Hyde. <clears throat> My name is Mitchell Hyde. Some of you know me. Um, a few of the new guys may not. Um, we're on the agenda today for rezoning five acres. And um, I don't know exactly the procedures, uh, but I'd like to talk to you a second about what's going on. Um, two years ago, I purchased a piece of property. And, uh, and I was able to purchase it, and I started a butcher shop uh, on my farm on Fort M Highway in Greenback. The uh, timing would not allow me to go through zoning because at that time, with the middle of COVID, um, the, uh, the United States government, USDA, was pushing and has pushed about three grants through to try to increase the number of butcher shops, slaughterhouses. Uh, because they found out during COVID that there were basically four major companies, and you can research this, that controlled all 90% of all the butcher and the beef and pork. Um, so they, I had applied for a grant at the time I even bought a piece of property. 
uh, before I bought the piece of property on the proof of the grant. The only way I could get this done because we was on the deadline was through agricultural exemption, which means I build it at another, another A, A2, A1 zoning. Um, but that only required, allowed me to kill my own animals. It does not allow me to kill if you brought me a beef or something. And I was okay with that because we have several hundred head and we was trying to grow our herd and our, our uh, hog operation also to where we can push our own meat out. Um, since then, after we got opened up in November of uh, 21, we've had just hundreds of people in the community and surrounding counties call us asking, you know, can, we, can you do our custom kill? Because if any of you guys know, and I'm sure some of you probably do, uh, you call a butcher, uh, slaughterhouse, butcher house, um, they could be anywhere from six months to um, a year out trying to get a beef process. And, um, and we're only one of six USDA uh, approved. Uh, there's a difference between custom. Custom means they don't kill yours, but USDA, uh, that's the Tennessee Department of Ag regulates that. The USDA regulates mine along with Tennessee Department of Ag, meaning I can kill yours and you can resell it to the public. You put it up to a restaurant. Um, there's only six of us in the host eastern part from, from about Crossville to Cookville this way. Okay, there's a couple in, in Greene County, um, above Knoxville, and one south down uh, South Pittsburgh area. So there's a demand and force. Uh, part of me, it's a two-edged sword, don't really want to deal with the public since you know, as you all know, dealing with the public is an issue, and I was trying to get close to retirement and, and not deal with them, but we get constant calls, and I'm having to deal with them either way, why can we not? My answer is simple, I'm not zoned appropriately. Um, so I've um, come for you to now to, uh, um, to ask to rezone this piece of property in the A, from A2 to uh, M1, I believe it's called, for uh, industrial purposes. And that's what it requires with Mr. Jenkins back here uh, to try to get everything, you know, meet your guidelines. Uh, we have zoned out five acres, and that's also according to your um, rec, uh, uh, program, your stipulations, that we zone out five acres, and we've done that out of my own property. I'm surrounded all the property, all the way around it, I own it also. But um, so after. For whatever reason, there's been a lot of conversation, and Mr. Seth, and I spoke to him uh, last week at the Planning Commission meeting, and I, I see he's not here today. There was a lot of conversation, and I'm sure some of y'all have heard, about why they hook up to tax water. Okay, I don't know why that's an issue. Uh, the, uh, according to uh, your regulations, if I have five acres, I can use a private system. If I have two acres, it, it requires two acres to be approved uh, on public works, public water, public sewer. It requires five acres to be approved for private sewer. Okay. So, but if I'd known, as I told the commissioners, planning commission last week, that this would be an issue, we'd probably do, you know, we might have went the other direction. But um, what happened is I'm under a deadline to get this building done in order to qualify for my grant. And, um, Sure, some of you have probably been through 411 to see my facility. If not, you can Google Hyde Farms. You can see, you know, we've got a real nice facility sitting there on 411 Highway. Um, we've invested over a million dollars for our own money in it. Um, and yes, we did get a small grant, but it was nowhere near, you know, um, enough to take care of the bill. But um, so we applied, we spoke to TAS. No way, my brother just so at that time spoke to TAS. Was me not was not myself, and the answer was a little vague. Now that's my wording. They kind of disagree, but that's neither here nor there. So um, on what we required, I later found out as I spoke to Tass um, two weeks ago myself that um, it requires a <coughs> special processing um, program. Okay, they have to. Um, Evaluate what we're dumping in the a, in a, in a city system, and then have to write a special program. Um, Mr. Mark Clinton spoke, and we spoke to him, told me this. Could not um, uh, tell me last week, two weeks ago, 
what that would require. That's a special uh, subcontractor they hire an engineer, I'm sure, to do that. And they did say that they'd be glad to take us, but uh, they also said blood is very high in biological problems, so it has to be treated. So no answer is it going to cost me $5,000 a year extra or $50,000 a year extra or even larger without this study. Well, this was only two weeks ago. It was a very vague conversation two years ago when we started the process. So I told my brother, I said, just contact the state of Tennessee and see if they will give us a permit. He notified the state of Tennessee and they came out. And I'd like to give you a couple pieces of paper, <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Uh, there's two copies. There's, uh, and y'all can pass it around, look however you need. But there's, uh, the three copies, I'll get mine so I can, the first one is a permit for a injection well permit, which we're required to put any, this water back into the ground. Okay, so the state of Tennessee, TDEC, has gave us this permit. Um, it renews, it's, it's good through November 20, 20, 23, 25. So it looks like it's about a four year, uh, close to five year period. Um, then the second uh, piece of paper that I have there is a, a permit for a uh, private sewer system. And the third piece of paper is a certificate of completion for the private sewer system. So we meet, and this is all regulated by TDA. It's not no local authority. You guys may understand that's you know they're pretty size. You know they got a lot of rules and regulations. Um, so we met and we have a a, a state approved sewer system. If that's a question, I don't know. It'll be a question for you guys. Okay, it was a question there. I'm just going to head it off if it is. Uh, the um, but. We meet all the requirements of the state. They gave us a permit. We got opened up. And now, like I said, we've had just numerous calls this regular, you know, every week somebody's asking, you know, somebody in my, you know, you know, organization, you know, can we do it or whatever. So I'd like to ask for uh, zoning to be changed so we can go ahead and, and serve the public. And I think it may be better for the whole county. And I appreciate y'all's consideration. If you have any questions, I'll be here while you're Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Paul Klein. When we looked at the minutes for the meeting today, uh, we were kind of surprised to see the 110 acre of uh, uh, sale along uh, Center 75 Park. Uh, we live on Roberson Springs Road, which kind of meanders east of there and ends up at the bottom of the property in question, uh, going into Center Park Drive. Uh, the first thing that struck me is we didn't see any kind of public notice in the newspaper about the sale. Well, for the people in our neighborhood, that's kind of a big deal. Uh, and the reason is we don't know who the purchaser is. We don't know the intended purpose of the property. Uh, right now, not sure what the current zoning is, and uh, we have no idea what kind of infrastructure might be necessary for the use of that property. Um, kind of appreciate a public notice to the neighborhood so that you can get public interest and uh, public buy into what's going on there. Um, can anybody tell me what the purpose of that purchase is? We're going to hear it tonight. We're going to hear it just a little bit. We don't know a thing Jack about Hall. it. He's fixing to introduce it to all of us. Okay, that's great. You, you know as much as we do. <laughs> okay, well, this seemed like the purchase was imminent. And uh, if nobody knows what it's all about, it seems like it probably needs to be considered a little longer. Well, if you wait a little bit, it'll be right after the zoning request. Jack Qualls is sitting back there, and he'll take us through it. Okay. Okay. Pat Hunter. Don't be garbage. Don't be garbage. Don't be My name is Pat Hunter, and no, I'm not talking about the garbage. Um, I wasn't going to speak tonight, but I think Mr. Sproul is being far 
too modest. Um, in going through the old, uh, the historical public records, I see Mr. Um, Sproul throughout those records, and his achievements um, will be part of our history. Um, he was um, he was progressive. He was a mover, a shaker, and he cared about the the community. So, since he is here, I wanted to say that to him. Um, the other thing that that I would like to talk about. Initially, um, I brought this to the county commission prior to the new commissioners. So I'm gonna make my pitch to the new commissioners as well. And this has to do with, um, with the property tax freeze for seniors. Not to be confused with the tax relief for those who are um, uh, have lower incomes. And the reason that I'm bringing this up now is because since I brought this up, a couple of things have happened. Uh, we're now talking about spending $10 million of ARPA money, which is the COVID money, but money will be spent for various um, and sundry <coughs> matters or, or things one thing will be employee pay raises and bonuses. And I noticed that there will be a discussion about stipends, but I'd also like to talk about commission's um, pay increase. Back last year, it, the average pay for a commissioner was 8,021. And with this new budget, it went up to $11,224.60. That is a 39.4% increase. So when we're talking about sacrifices and pay raises and also talking about the elderly, I think it's time for this commission to reconsider the tax freeze. I think there's um, the economy is better, but we're also talking about the fact that we have high inflation, and now we're talking about building a new school. And we're talking about a possible 20 to 30 cent property tax increase. And for seniors who have paid their taxes every year, um, I think it's time to reconsider the property tax freeze before you impose a 20 to 30 cent property tax hike. So, um, I'll send you information via email, and I'll be talking about it in the future, and hopefully I'll bring some seniors with me who will also share their concerns and their wishes. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Pat. Okay, that concludes the public comments section. Jim Jenkins. You want to stand or sit for all of this? <laughs> you wasn't complaining, what would y'all have to do? Mm -hmm. I wanted to just uh, briefly go over these since it's a workshop. Uh, how to May, this is a rezoning request for the five acres from A2 Rural Residential District to the M1 General Commercial District. Uh, this is a uh, map parcel uh, 84, uh, map 84, parcel 44 on uh, 7431 Highway 411 South. This is in the third legislative district that Mr. Hyde was referring to. Mr. Chairman, let me say uh, on that item right there, as you can see, Commissioner Satterfield isn't here today. And uh, he, I know he has a, a number of questions and concerns about this particular uh, rezone request that is in the heart of his district. And probably as much as we've heard tonight is as much as we need to probably deal with until Bill's here to, to lead us on this one. So he just asked me to kind of point that out. He plans to take it up. Uh, probably at the November 7th meeting. Okay. But that was, and if you'd like to know, that was a 7 to 1 recommendation. You have one abstention, one no. Um, resolution, uh, the next one was the resolution to remove, basically uh, to remove section 7.035 driveway permits from the zoning resolution. <coughs> this went through uh, uh, 0 to 8. Uh, for our planning commission. All opposed to removal of that item. So we'll leave it in your hands. 
And then I also ask about traffic studies too. They ask about traffic studies to be done on lots over 25 lots. That that'll have to be addressed. We we'll have to look through as to what needs to be entailed in a traffic study, and then that'll actually not be in a zoning resolution, but subdivision regulation. Thank you, sir. Uh, the next item was uh, this is a resolution to accept uh, Gail Lane, Maggie Lane, Kate Lane, Emily Lane, and Lily Lane, uh, which are in Emily's Landing subdivision into the public road system. This is in third legislative district uh, to have information from the highway department stating they are okay with the roads and being accepted. That's also third district in Coach Satterfield's district. Let me back up to you, B, one just a minute. Yes, sir. Are you going to be asking us to take any particular action on B in November? Do we yeah. need to do anything? Yeah. What? Vote, vote to what? Rid. Leave it like it is? I mean, what, what are we going to vote on? Well, because it's an amendment of change, uh, you know, can't planning commissions make a recommendation, and then it's ultimately left to county commission to vote uh, their conscience, whether like a rezoning, you have the right to reprove or deny. And, and, and every item, has to, um, the rezonings and changes to the resolution have to come through, as I understand, through to be voted on by this body. And what changed in this item? What uh, changed? going to change in this item if y'all don't vote to uh, to accept the amendment. The only thing y'all can do is say, hey, we're going to go against planning commission, we're going to vote to have that removed. Otherwise, it'll stay in the book as it is. And, and we do that. That's not uncommon. Yeah. But I, I guess my question is, Obviously, we're going to leave it as is right now. Okay. But I think what I heard from Planning Commission is you're you're going to come back with something else that's going to also include the traffic study. Now, understand this came from the Planning Commission. Uh, I think we all got a little caught off guard on this one. Yeah, the, the traffic <coughs> study is going to be separate from this. Okay, this this segment. But it'll is be actually, somewhere. Yeah, this is actually in zoning. Okay, so any lot, whether it's a new subdivision or not. From now on, as soon as y'all say we're not taking it out, then I'm going to start requiring uh, every property to have a permit from the highway department to connect. But then what happens is all that falls back at our feet in the codes office to see the implementation and everything's in compliance with that zoning resolution. That's neither here nor there. The traffic study is something we need to look at, and then we need to take it to planning commission and say, here's what a traffic study is. If this is what y'all want, we're going to put it I looked through the regs today, it needs to go into subdivision regulations, right under where it says greater than five lots are required to be accessed to an 18 foot road. We can go under that segment where it talks about the abutment to county roads and state that a traffic study on these lots has to be conducted and then have to spell out what that traffic study needs to include. And that would, that would, that would kick in at 25 lots? As I understand, the right. request was for greater uh, subdivisions over 25 lots. I think that's what it was. That, I believe that is. So uh, that's <laughs> where that would kick in based on that request. So we just need to spend some time see what a traffic study, that's not my expertise by no means, what, what should we include in that, what are we looking for. So when we tell them, then they know this is what the information we need to see and provide to the Planning Commission. And for the benefit of... Uh, the titular head of the Loudoun County Republican Party, Billy Pickle, who just came in a few minutes late, he was not the planning commission. I'm not sure where he was, but he wasn't there. I hear this conversation. Uh, but they were concerned, just totally eliminating the whole resolution, that there was absolutely no checks and balances on where anybody could just stick a road, a driveway, onto a county road. There was discussion of that. There was discussion of culverts, I think, came into it. Jim explained them very clearly your position on that sort of stuff, but they were unanimously opposed to just eliminating this. I think open to um, changing it to make it more user friendly, but they they certainly weren't supportive of, of doing away with it. Well, like I said, uh, I believe y'all need to officially vote on the resolution November seventh, and after that vote, November eighth. Anyone that comes in our office will first be sent to the highway department to obtain a permit from them. I'll discuss it with Mr. Pickle and find out what works best for him and how he wants to handle that. And then, uh, and then he'll lay in our lap. And, and, you know, I don't know if maybe something this commission wants to discuss with the 
with the road superintendent uh, to look at those rigs that are there and see how far they want to go with enforcement of that rig. If you leave it in our office's lap, we will enforce it to exactly what it says. Well, and I think modifications needed. I think the grade requirement for asphalt or concrete, I think that's much. I, I definitely agree with the argument that, that somebody trying to build their home or moving in a, a modest place or something, and now for so many feet up the hill because it's 12% or whatever, I've got to put concrete, I've got to put asphalt, that's a burden some saying. So I think a modification of how it's written probably would be more beneficial than just keeping it as it is or eliminating it as it is. Let's make it more user friendly. Let's make it easier on both of your offices for how it will work and that sort of stuff. So if between now and November the 7th, if you all can figure out something that works, we, that, we'll know what we need to do. Just eliminate it, hold up, do whatever, and come back later and get something better than what it is right now. Yes, sir. We'll work on it. Okay. The... This is a resolution where we're going to uh, look into accept the new North Wilkerson Road. There's not a real good way to identify this. This is a new road uh, that runs through a uh, tract of property that's located basically we're across the road from uh, Lake Point Drive intersection of the public road system. This is in the 6th Legislative District. Somewhere I think she included a map that showed how that proposed road run up through that uh, property. It's a beautiful road. Yes, sir. Jim, what was the, uh, on item C, what was the Planning Commission's recommendation? Of vote? Item C was 8 to 0. To approve. To approve, yes, sir. Item D is 8 to 0 to approve. E. E is a, uh, let's see, this is a uh, resolution adopted by Lavin County. This is closing a portion of the right of way of Wilkerson Road, running through the portion of joining tax map 17, parcel 8501 and 86. Uh, Locate and then, of course, it goes back to where it's located. This again is in the 6th Legislative District. This went through 6 1. Uh, someone abstained, I believe, from the vote. So basically, we're <clears throat> the new road has been created in the, in the concept of closing a portion of the existing road down and the, uh, the new lots that are created from that, that point there on uh, would have access to this new road that's being opened. And, and current Wilkinson Road is about this wide. So for easier access to Mr. Seppin's house and his neighbors, he was put in new Wilkinson Road. Is that what it'll be called? Yes, sir. Um, for easier access, and, and my only my only request for the abandonment is for some signage. I believe Richard said it's already been discussed, letting people know there's a dead end, no turn around ahead. Plus, I'd just like some guardrails um, at the, the end of current Wilkerson Road, Wilkerson Road, the signs so people know. We don't have to worry then, though. No, sir. Are we on that? Yes, sir. All right. So this is a, also a rezoning. This is about 5.34 acres from C2 General Commercial District to R1 Suburban Residential District. Uh, and to remove the agricultural stipulation on the other 3.4 acres, this is Loudoun County Tax Map 007, Parcel 62, located at 19666 Highway 11 East. This is in the 5th Legislative District. Larger track, they're looking to uh, rezone a portion of it to R1, and then there was some stipulations put on this property back when it was rezoned from R1 to C2. They were hoping to have that uh, stipulation of the it was an ag sales use only. They were wanting to get that stipulation removed. This was this particular item was voted on, and it, it was this. Uh, no recommendation made for that to go through zero day. It was denied zero day. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this one is in my district, and it keeps popping up on us. Uh, I, I was at the planning commission, and I was I was pleased to see the planning commission turn it down, and. Uh, we, we're going to have this ongoing situation about access to, as Adam said a minute ago, Shipley Lane, which I don't guess eight feet wide, 
and access to Old Stage Road, which cannot take any access in this place. And I don't know this means anything to you all. Ultimately, the Planning Commission said no, they denied the request. Now, Jim and I are of a disagreement here. Under the Planning Commission regulations, once something's denied, it can't come back for 180 days. And of course, the logic behind that was to keep somebody from coming back every month to get turned down, come back, come back. Jim disagrees with that. But as far as what's coming up on November the 7th, uh, I'm 100% in support of the Planning Commission's denial on this one. Hope, hope y'all support that. Okay. Last is the, uh, uh, to rezone from C1 Rural Center District to C2 General Commercial District, Lavin County Tax Map 042, parcel 63. This is located at 6995 Davis Ferry Road, Lavin County, uh, in the first legislative district. Yeah, that's in ours, and we've, we've had a lot of discussion. And the roadway on Davis Ferry will not support trucks. I remember when I lived in that area, I drove a Chevrolet Dually, and it was dangerous for me to drive that stretch of road. And getting out on 444 or turning off of 444 onto Davis Ferry is treacherous too, so. And it was denied by planning commission. Yeah, it was. Zero to eight. Zero to eight. Yeah. It's not my district, but I've had a lot of phone calls from people that I know. That it was a packed area, house. So the planning commission. Like it was probably yeah. 50 people here. It was the largest crowd I've ever seen for yeah. one single item, it, by all means. And I've been to a lot of them. Yeah. And there, everybody was opposed. Right. And me and Chase are in agreement. We're going to stick with the planning commission. So. Okay. All those items will be on November 7th commission meeting. Thank you. Okay. Y'all have a good evening. Thank you. Jack Wall, Center 75. Thank you for having me here this evening. Uh, for your consideration, we've got a couple maps up here. Uh, attend to purchase, uh, there you go, the 11, uh, 111 acres that's currently zoned heavy manufacturing located in the city limits of Loudoun uh, for proposed advanced manufacturing facility. Uh, they are looking to um, create about 129 jobs that are uh, highly skilled uh, positions. So the company itself will be producing uh, advanced coatings, polymers, and paints for industrial uses. There will be no smokestacks associated with it, or they, and they will not be emitting any gases. I know that's always a question about stinky. Is this the same property we've sold a couple or three other times it fell through on? That, that is, yes. Okay. Yes. What was the last one that didn't buy? Uh, that was a, a foam mattress firm that okay. did not, not purchase the last one. One is on 10.00. I'm sorry, I don't have that now. Oh. Th those are. Um, is it this one you want? Oh, yeah, th those are combined to make up the uh, the larger track is 89 acres and smaller track is 22. So combined, they make up the uh, one, 111 acres. Well, what's on 10.0 far right hand side? <coughs> one next, point. 10.0 on. on the far right hand side. 10. Yeah. That's that's a. Uh, that is empty. Uh, that goes into a gorge to the creek. That that is not part of uh, Center 75. Gotcha. And this will leave how much in the industrial park? Uh, we will have uh, 17 acres that are industrial, about 25 that's commercial, uh, and 38 that is multifamily after this. Okay. And we're still, I think I read, we're still selling it really good prices. We, we are, we're selling it to the rest, I mean, the fair market value of what's selling around it. I mean, that's... All the properties we're looking 20, at. 20,000 an acre, what is, what is it now? Uh, 20,000 acre for that piece. The other one we sold at 25. Um, the commercial tracks were com selling comparable to the last uh, comps that were done in the area for Burger King come in. Chief, you said they were producing polymers? Polymers. They're, they're going to be bringing in, uh, they'll be doing uh, coatings. So it's polymer coatings and paints. They'll paint stuff on site or no, it's like or just like making paint. Yes, but not making the raw materials. It's, it's not a traditional bringing in raw materials and producing things. So there should be no emissions uh, from
from that standpoint. How many employees? About 129 in this first phase. This is phase one. They have a medium uh, salary range. It's it's in the high six, middle 60s. Yes, sir. Now, will you need a vote on November 7th for this? <coughs> yes, or? I will. You will. Have you got to the phase of talking about pilots or? <clears throat> We we will probably offer yes we will be offering them a pilot absolutely because man wants one you got to give away that tax dollars I do guys people want one so I went ahead and this is you all possible. so do your research and come back with your recommendation I mean this is this is kind of a big one but we've had that property since 1999 1999 so but we sold it six or eight times since I've been on county I've only sold it once so I, I don't know. <laughs> And is it an offshore company or? Fortune 500. Fortune 500. Okay. Any questions for Jack? Do it, the production of any of those products, uh, U.S. police products associated with that? Well, I'm not sure I follow what you're asking. Is it going to be run off into the groundwater no. or anything else? No, there's no. I mean, any, any permits that are required to meet, you know, TDAC and, and EPA will be required to do that because it is a manufacturer. Any other questions for Jack? I have one. What's the unemployment rate right now? Oh, I would say, don't quote, don't quote me, but it's probably 3.8%, which Zero. is like 600 and 700 people. Yep. <laughs> Do you know what kind of feedback you're getting from the manufacturers as far as hiring people? Because I know that there was a problem either they couldn't pass a drug test or has that improved any of the hiring um, process? I don't, I don't think there's a specific sector out here in the, in the workforce that is worse off than the other one. I mean, people are willing to pay, they're doing it for us. Mr. Chairman, yes. if nobody else doesn't have a question, I'm going to ask the commission indulgence. I have item number whatever on here, which also involves Mr. Qualls, and I'm going to about guess he'd like to not stay any longer than he has to. So if we could move his my part up to now, I'll, I'll handle this with him, and then he can be on the road uh, wherever he wherever he goes. Discussion of pilots. Discussion of pilots. Is that Go all right ahead. there, buddy? Side by me. All right. For, for those of you that may not know or are new, and, and for those of us that need to review, pilots, pilots are a way to cheat the system. Uh, the state law, state constitution, everything does not allow anybody to pay a lesser property tax. Everybody's treated equal and everybody has to pay the same. So a lot of years ago, through I'm sure lobbyists and whatever, the state legislature came up with an idea and they call it pilot, payment in lieu of taxes. And the way they get around paying their property taxes and paying equally like everybody else is a business, a company, or whatever will give their property, and I'm going to simplify it, they just give their property to an organization called an Industrial Development Board. Now, Industrial Development Boards are allowed to be set up by the state. Local <clears throat> municipalities can do it. We have one. All the cities have one. TRDA has one. TRDA does not have one. I thought they still had one. No. Oh, the Telco Peninsula, which is the 1,200 acres that's zone industrial, is under this county's jurisdiction. Okay, okay, well good, I'm glad to know that. Anyhow, so so if you don't want to pay taxes, if you want a big break of some kind, you negotiate with your local legislators, and then you can give your property to the, your local IDB, Industrial Development Board, which is a tax-exempt organization. The legislative body gets figured out, well, you should be paying $100,000 a year taxes, but we're going to let you pay $10,000 a year. Once you give this property, here's the agreement, and then they pay $10,000 a year, and it's all legal through an IDB and through legislation. That's just the really short version of what IDBs are. Now, on top of that, in Little More City, they've even come up with the Health, Education, and Housing Board, which is the same thing, and they're doing it for residential. And facilities board. Facilities board. So they're doing the same thing for residentials discussion for another day. 
So over the years, we've had a lot of pilots. We have a lot out right now. I would like to, if I could, the, sure. one, the one pilot that uh, the county IDB has passed in the last, since 1978, uh, was given to Project Strength, which was at Watt Road. Uh, that project did not um, end up uh, finalizing that pilot, so they did not take advantage of that program. So that is the only one that I know that the county has uh, out there. You're exactly right. and. I don't know if Mike Campbell knows that or not. He, he does. does. Okay, okay. So we I only had contact more. with our tax assessor and the trustee, and, and I send the stuff to Tracy Blair as well whenever these things come to fruition, and, and I make sure everybody gets copies of the and asked for it. So that said, the county only had the one but didn't even get it. Now, we rarely get it because they're nearly always in municipal industrial areas, the cities, the cities in uh, Loudon and Little City. We have a, a several with Loudon, we have several with Lenore City. And, and I, I'm not going to even try to start quoting numbers, but generally, and within state law, the cities can give away our property taxes. We don't even have to give permission. Each city can just do it without us even agreeing to it, whatever amount they want to do, which is scary. Uh, but normally, in fact, I think Jack may know better than I do. I think every pilot we've had up to now, the uh, the distribution of the dollar amount, whatever is chosen, whatever is picked out of the sky, has been proportionately given to the county and the cities based on the county and the city's property tax ration rations. So let, let me just say before we go down that rabbit hole. Um, uh, it ain't a rabbit hole. It's right. a hole. It's a hole. <laughs> it's a hole. Uh, so every county around us has a pilot program, and we compete with every county around us. And they have a matrix that's set, that solidifies what they're going to give industry that come to town. And he's right. There is industries, commercial, there's retail pilots, there's housing for apartments, there's rehab, uh, like uh, Lavin Garden Apartments over here. There's different types of pilots. There are different types. But as far as what he is talking about, the matrix itself, you know, it, it takes into the account of the capital expenditure that the company is going to be bringing to town. It looks at the number of jobs with wages associated with those jobs, and it calculates a scoring mechanism, and that's what determines what many years there's offered for that company. Now, everybody around us has that. I use theirs as a guide, so I know that Monroe County is going to give them 10 years, and I give them 11 if we want the company. Maybe we don't want the company, but that's that. there is a matrix out there. The reason I didn't go forward with, if you recall, Mr. Schaefer, several years ago, doing a matrix was because it took the advantage of us being able to utilize their their matrix against them. And so it's better for us to have the flexibility than it was being ironed out. Their matrix is already solidified. They don't go to the county commission. It's already a document. They walk in, the company walks in and says X, Y, and Z, and they're guaranteed a pilot. We, are, we do not guarantee anything. My turn? Sure. Okay. Now, where I was going was, all the pilots in the past, and I think Jack can help me with this, with this, is divided up in the percentage of what the city property tax is, what the county property tax is, and nearly all of them right in the 60-40 range. Is that fair? That, that is fair. Comment. Yeah. And, and that, that's kind of how it's laid out in state law. It's, it's, that's how no, it's not laid out in state law like that. Well, I depends on, it depends on I'll read it to you in a minute if we need to, but that's not really what we're even here for. Well, I, have, you know, I didn't know you were an attorney for the county, uh, Mr. Schaefer, but the, the way it I reads... I learned from Harvey. I, I don't okay. want to Well, the way it reads, it depends on what type of pilot it is. And so if it's an industrial pilot, that is not the case. Okay. All right. That's not even here or there. Anyhow, what happened was on uh, the back in September, Jack presented one to Lenore City. And for, to my knowledge, the first time I've ever seen... Uh, a proportionate distribution of the pilot. This was a seven-year pilot. It's for the new uh, brewery on, on the back side of town up there. It's for a seven-year pilot, and during that time, the payment in lieu of taxes for falling construction shall be 89, $86.19 to the city and $2,154 to the county. Now, what would have caused the change in the, in the partition there? I mean, you wrote it. This is yours. You presented it to them, right? Uh, well, you know, every city has a right to abate as much of the county taxes as they desire. They could, they could have given you zero. For oh, that. absolutely. That's that's the scary um, part of all this. But you know, I, I can't, 
I don't know the rationale uh, between. Well, did the, you come up with that number? Or did they come up with that number? I came up with that number, and that number was divvied up into that portion. You came up with the total. That's right. And then somebody else decided who's going to get what. That's right. Uh, but you don't know what that was based on or why all of a sudden it's a different way. I mean, this company's going to pay essentially, uh, let me get my glass back on, right at a little over $10,000 a year for seven years for, uh, for, for their property, in lieu of their property tax. Maybe the city's trying to get some extra money out of the county. I can't answer that, sir. Yeah. I think that was a pretty good answer. <laughs> I was going to say, it might be a way for them to get money back from the AFT money that was taken away from them. Yeah, might be. I, 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 I'm saying all I'm hearing is just, just keep talking. Keep talking. I mean, as far as the... the, the Do you ever feel compelled to kind of defend the county? You mean like you defend me or what? No, I'm talking about you do, as your position... I mean, given that we're paying eighty percent of the, the well, funding sir, for EDA, like you explain to me besides the jail what the citizens of the two cities get uh, for their county taxes you collect. Everything, everybody. Please gets tell me what that is. Go by the list. If you uh, have a list, I'd love to hear it. Roads. Roads. Every, most of the every major, major, most of your major highway systems. Every the department highway. in this building right here. Mm, there is that. There's. I mean, but they could form their own. I mean, the point is, at the end of the day. You, you like to get up here and on your soapbox and talk politics and all these things about how the, the cities don't pay for this and the cities don't pay for that. But the cities, they collect the county taxes. We, they don't charge you for that, do they, in, in your district? Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about now. They, they collect the property tax for the county? I don't know that. They do. I think they we do theirs anything. too if they won't pay here. I think it's kind of a mutual thing. So I, think, I, think, I think the bad part is we're all in the same boat here. I don't think we should all pick and fight over dimes and pennies when at the end of the day we're trying to create better jobs Who, who's for the people that live here who's picking and fighting jack i asked a question and I'm i've asked a answer. simple question and i'm trying to answer sir i'm listening at the end of the day if you don't like the way the pods are situated sir there is a state statute i would get with my representative and ask them to change it tell them what happened the last time we tried that well, you're the one that tried that, didn't you, sir? Uh, the, the full commission tried. What what happened? To, why didn't it pass? I'll let time? you explain that. Well, Jack went down and killed it in the state legislature when we tried to get legislation passed to stop this, where the cities could give away the county property tax. I did not go anywhere. Well, I was told you were the bird. Well, that's because you had lunch with me at Cracker Barrel, and I didn't go anywhere. I don't know what that part means either. Okay. Anyhow, well, are you there? I, I you're don't there, right? I don't know what you're talking about. Sure, you don't. It's convenient memory lapse. Good. Yeah, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I don't have a clue. Don't even care, to be honest if with you. If there's any other commissioner who would like to ask questions, I'd be glad to answer this. Please, time. somebody ask about this. So who makes this decision? Which decision, sir? The money, how it's separated. <clears throat> uh, each jurisdiction has that op option to each municipality could make that determination, sir. Okay. So the city of Loudoun... Would ha would be able to do this on this pilot. That That's correct. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> I think that's big. Uh, the big part of it. Once, once the the amount is laid out there, if it's inside the city, they have the right to determine what what funds go where. And as Jack said, if they the city decide, they could just say the county gets nothing, out. which is a very peculiar law, but it's there. And yeah, that don't seem. Seem the way they should be, but it never. We've never had this happen before. Normally, it's always sixty forty. Like I said, sixty. And when county. it was, there wasn't a problem, correct? There's always been a problem with certain members, sir. Well, I'm not a pilot fan. I'll be honest with you. I, I see all pilots as corporate welfare. When they don't pay their share, the citizens have to pick up the balance. Is how that comes down. There's no balance, sir. I'm sorry. It's a coupon. You start charging a dollar, you charge 50 cents. If you, if you don't charge anything, it don't come at all. I mean, I understand the pilot program. I mean, it's it seems in instances necessary to be able to get some of these good uh, corporations to come into our county. I understand that. But I definitely disagree with the way that was broke down on the on the percentage the county got on the taxes on the, the one we're speaking of in North City. Well, however long I've been here, I've, I've yet to hear a pilot or, or a company of any kind coming in that says if we don't get a pilot we're not coming 
these were generally voluntarily offered up and, and Jack's that newer. Not, that is not true. So. Well, Jack's newer, I, I've spent most of my first career with Pat Phillips. He was our first guy before Jack. And uh, I, I mean, again, we, we have a certain amount of revenue that's gonna come in. And if, if we have to have this much and these don't pay that, then the others have gotta pay more. It's just, that's just plain old math is all that. Well, we can sit up there with a vacant piece of property for the next 20 years. So after the end of the lease, it's a lease. So how a pilot works is it's a lease that comes from uh, the company, leases it to the ID. The IDB is actually the property owner. Mm -hmm. At the end of the lease, the tax assessor comes in and reassesses the property at that value at, at the end of the lease. Right. So it comes back on the tax rolls higher. A lot higher. A lot higher than what it would have initially. Absolutely. How much money have they invested? Which company? That's still on that property that we're looking at. Uh, estimated about 240 million. But that one's not come. They're not. We don't have a pilot force on that one yet. Well, we don't bring pilots to the county commission unless it's in the well, county. Nobody has a pilot on that one yet, do they? Not yet. No, but sir. it does. Will go to the city of Lowell. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The city, yeah. And it'll be up to them to decide how the how it's broke down. Or, yeah, I mean, we try to make a conscious effort. We understand the school system. I mean, that's one of the things we always try to look at is, is what what funding mechanisms associated with the school and what what percentages of, of the revenues are going to the schools because that's well, most of the time most major budgets the, the majority line share goes to the school system. So in the city of Loudon, that's typically where most of the school Loudon County schools are. They try to look at it and. Keep it at that rate, what it's at, normally it says. So the IDB leases it to the company? They No, the company leases it to the IDB gotcha. and it gets it back from like the IDB is taxes. They got gotcha. the tax of them. Gotcha. <coughs> you just told me all I need to know. I thought that was my only question. I'm not I, sure I didn't, how it I mean, I didn't, sideways. I don't know what I told you, but sure, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I came up with a number based on the capital expenditure that was uh, estimated. The big number, the big number. That, that's, and I come up with that smaller number and those jurisdictions can decide what they do with whatever. I mean, I'm, I'm simply staff for the three industrial development boards and EDA and the housing, uh, health, housing education facilities board. Okay. When is this, when is this, is it finalized? Is the contract signed? Do they own the land now, the brewery? Uh, no, they never did on the, the, it was always in the industrial development board. Um, it, was from, company, it was from the, the last company, brewery that didn't come through. They, they owned it for, I want to say six months maybe, and then it got reverted back because they didn't hold up their end of it. How long is this pilot yeah. for? Now, I, I'm just saying. This is the, the pilot that he's referencing is for seven years. And then we'll have seven years? And the estimated uh, revenue, I think, is like the project itself is like $3 million. But after seven years, they could walk away because they don't own the land. No, they will own the land at the end of seven years. It goes back to them when they go they don't, they don't own it. They don't own it now. The IDB owns it, right? No, it's, it's a lease. It's a lease, it's a lease document. Okay. And so basically, they own it, but they lease it, they lease it from the IDB. So when is the brewery buying the land from the, the IDB or whoever owns it? At the end of the seven years, it will revert to the brewery for a dollar. What's the bargain? So who owns it now? The industrial development board. So and they, they have owned it since the first brewery. That's correct. So and typically a company owns it and leases an IDB. That is not the case in this instance. Same thing. I'm sorry, repeat that? Typically company A would own it and lease it to the IDB. That's correct. That is not the case in this instance though. Not in that instance because... That's where I was getting yes, yes, that's okay. correct. Thank you. Anything else for Jack? A quick, a quick uh, point of interest, and I don't know this, uh, I saw Mr. Sproul head out a minute ago. Mr. Sproul was a gentleman who wrote all of our interlocal agreements and all of that sort of stuff. I generally would tell people how Harvey Sproul's done everything good that ever happened in Loudoun County and everything bad that ever happened in Loudoun County. <laughs> he gets to, am I right? He gets the credit and blame for all of it. But he did write the uh, initial agreement between the uh, EDA and the, the three entities that fund it, and, and Jack knows this very well, and that's part of why he carries a little sore on his nose there. I've always thought the cities and the county all, all equally pay the same amount to the EDA. The county pays, I don't know, 
75 percent, 80,000, 68 percent of it, and then the cities pay the balance. And I think the committee of 100, which was established by Harvey Sproul, pays a little dab too. But we pay all, we pay the big part of the money, yet really we come to the short end of the stick pretty regular. I'm done. That's all I have. We got you out early. You don't have to sit no longer. Oh, I'd like to sit around, man. Have, I had to say. have a seat, man. Stay as long as you want. Thank you, Mr. You'll, Chairman. That's all. You'll come with all the details on November 7th <laughs> looking for a vote? No, we... Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm on Center, Center 75. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you for your time. And I do appreciate what you guys are doing. Thank you. Okay, Mayor Bradshaw is up next, but unfortunately he's in sick bay. And he wanted to make a change to the Board of Zoning Appeals. He wanted to replace Carly McEachran with Mike Waller, <coughs> term to complete through June 2023. So that'll be on the November 7th for that change. Okay, next up is Commissioner Randall. Thank you, Commissioner Cullen. Uh, I want to discuss uh, the boards and committee stipends. It's something I've looked into. Commissioner Shaver also looked into it a little bit. Um, I passed out a piece of paper there at the beginning. Um, these are these are very important boards and, and committees that we have, and we have not increased any of the stipends in years, and I mean a lot of years. And you know, with the price of everything these days, I mean, there's there's people driving from Greenback that's on planning commission. Um, I just think it would be in good faith just to show some appreciation to them with, with an increase to these stipends. Um, just kind of open it up for discussion if anybody's got any comments. Mr. Chairman, like, like Commissioner Randolph said, I, I had gotten actually information from Tracy because I didn't even know how many boards we had to do stipends. And really the only two we, we really have are Beer Board and Planning Commission. The Board of Equalization, if I'm not mistaken, Tracy, we did a raise for them maybe a year ago, last year or sometime. I think it was a year or two ago. So, I mean, they're, you would just kind of take them out of it. They're not really a part of this. They're, they made a daily thing for 30 days in June when they do equalization, so it's really Beer Board and Planning Commission. And I, I, I'm sorry if I missed it. Did you say a number? I didn't say a specific number, but I mean, I'm looking right now, uh, Beer Board, $50 per meeting. Um, same with the uh, planning commission bza i would like to you know maybe take them up to 75 also on the uh, planning commission the secretary has to come in quite often several several times a month to sign plats and maybe make that position say a hundred dollars a month seems seems reasonable it's not changed in 20 years i don't reckon Any other comments? Would you want to put that to a vote November 7th? Yes, that would be great. Okay. Could you put the number for that so the rest of us can see it? One of those. Well, they meet once a month. Well, you know they, they meet once a month, but the members, you only you only draw your stipend if you show up for the meeting. You gotta show so up. it's going to be hard to show a absolute figure. And I know that Jim turns his in quarterly, Tracy, six months. Um, yes. And the beer board probably meets <clears throat> once to twice a year. So that was small, but the members only get their stipend if they are at okay. the meeting. So it's going to be different all the time. It's hard to well, have. What I was saying is you're paying them 50 now and you want to make it 75. That's what I'm looking for. That's what, that's what we're talking about, yes. Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense? Except yep. the secretary, you should move to 100. Correct. Okay. Or he grew out. Yeah. All right, we'll put that on November 7th for a full vote. The football field on the hill. Yes, I had some uh, people, you know, ask me some questions about that. Who owns it? What, what's going to be done with it? I just wanted to open up a discussion, get your all's opinion, um, what we can do with it. The, the place up there. I mean, I'd like to see us be able to do something good with it or sell it. Um, Gary's going to bust your bubble on this one. <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm not going to bust his bubble. I mean, what I've found so far is that that's actually owned by the Board of Education. Okay. We'll need to confirm that. But um, Mike said he was going to work on that. Yeah, he was going to work on that today. But I traced it back to 1842 
from the original deed, uh, and it was owned by the Presbyterian Church, and they um, transferred that to the Board of Education. Um, and then um, it looked like in um, 19, 1988, part of that where the old school was was transferred to uh, the McGill family, um, to uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. McGill. And, and I'm going to do a little bit more research because it was, it said that the transfer was ten dollars plus services rendered. So I don't know what those services mm -hmm. rendered. I don't, I don't know. How They're in the funeral business. So we thought maybe three people slaughtered out. Four bodies underneath. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, when Terry bought that, or when Terry received that, the building was in pretty bad shape. I'm it sure was. it was. So he done some work to it, and for some reason I'm wanting to think that was part of his payment was the. Right getting the building back. So that, that looks like that, that's when it split from the, from the bottom part of that property to the football field. And then in um, uh, 2015, it was sold to uh, Jim Purdy for 200000 and um, And then his estate sold that in uh, two, 2021 uh, to a group out of Knoxville. That's just the for school part, right? Yes. The school yes. part. So everything on the football field everything looks else like with the never school changed. Uh, hands. I can't find any deed yet that's saying it's changed hands from the, the deed actually says Loudon High School. Okay. Uh, instead of Loudon Board of Education. So good. Um, but so far good. not he not found anything that says that it's never got separated. That's never got separated. But it's gonna be there somewhere. It's yeah. just not been found. So yet. Uh, Mike's gonna do a little investigating for us tomorrow. Um, I, I mean I think it's a great idea it's sitting up there. Uh, I'd like to see something done with it. I'd like to see something done with for kids up there. I'd, I'd hate to see. Who's paying maintenance on it right now? Um, Owen and the only, the we only are. I county told county Mike that it ends this I, winter. We're done. I, I knew the answer to the question. Right. Uh -huh. uh, but I hate to see you know a bunch of condos sitting up on top of that hill. Also. Oh yeah. Uh, Van, Van would like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are they doing with That's the old three school three building three. now? What's happening in the old brick part? From from what I'm understanding, that's um, uh, kind of a like a boarding house kind of thing with uh, uh, folks that stay there and they're picked up and they're taken over to work at the at the uh, a couple of the plants. So that, that's from what I'm understanding. And that's something I guess Loudon City approves or allows or permits or. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. Commissioner Quillen. Yes. I just wanted an update on the funds that Loudoun County owes Lenore City for the Simpson Road project. I know it was discussed at the last budget committee meeting. And at that point, I know um, county finance director and city finance director were supposed to get together, compare numbers, and I, I just wanted an update on that to, to what has transpired and how are we moving forward. We did meet. The meeting went very well. And at, the, at that budget committee meeting that you referred to, you'll recall that um, the information that I presented to the budget committee uh, was a review of uh, documentation that I had received from Lenore City on everything that had been paid on the project. And there were some reconciling items that I, I couldn't reconcile with the information that they sent. So we went and met um, with officials in Lenore City. All my questions were answered. They were able to produce documents that I didn't have. There were some things that were included twice, therefore I, I couldn't reconcile them. So I understand how they got to the 202000 that they are requesting from the county. That was reported to the budget committee today. Okay. Are we moving forward with paying them the 202000 at this point since the numbers have been reconciled? Have we ever gotten proof how much they were, re were reimbursed by the state? I have the information that they sent. And um, for every reimbursement uh, request, that was forwarded to me, I can see where that amount um, was uh, deposited into their bank account. I have what they sent. And I think the missing link here was this this explanation of just kind of at the end, TDOT said, well, we're not going to pay no more, and so now they want us to pick up 
10% uh, portion of what they claim TDOT didn't pay for. Now, I don't know why. I've not seen anything explaining why TDOT, TDOT bailed at the last minute, but kind of an odd, I don't think I'd ever heard of that happening. If we agree to uh, pay the 10%, and Tracy says the numbers check out, I think we need to need to pay it. Well, we didn't actually agree to pay 10%. We agreed to pay 89000 79000 79000 It said 10% or the, of the estimated cost. That's what the estimated way. cost Which was, was 89000 at the right. time. Estimated means it could change up or down. Uh, I guess you can interpret however you want to. <laughs> so what is the figure that we owe? 202000 The city is requesting 202000 okay. And that is the total... That's ten percent of the total that they paid. Now, about one hundred fifty thousand, maybe one hundred sixty thousand of that, they have acknowledged, and in the documentation that I was provided, I can see that the state did not reimburse on a portion of it. However, even the part that the state did not reimburse the city, they are including that in the amount that they are requesting from the county. And the amount that the county has set aside from this from years ago, perhaps everyone is familiar with it. Yeah. Um, this goes back to 2013 or 14. September 13. September 2013. And um, the amount that the county set aside for it was based on the estimated cost of the project at the time. And that's $89,800. That amount is in a sub fund in general capital projects. It's been appropriated every year. It's there in the current fiscal year, but that's the reason that that's the amount that the county had set aside. It was based on an estimate back in 2013. And of course, the cost of the project is more. So if you've reconciled 202,000, is that the figure that we owe them or, or we're not sure still? What I, am, what I am saying is that I understand why the city of Lenore City is requesting 202,000. Okay. From the documents that they sent to me and that we reviewed when we were there, I can see how they paid out an amount that 10% of it would be 202000 Whether or not the county pays that amount is a decision for the commission to make. What, what was the, what were the items not reimbursed? Like, why were they not reimbursed? For what items or why? What why? and why? Well, you I'm may not sorry. know why, but what? Oh, what? Um, wait, hang on just a second. I was wondering if TDOT didn't see them worthy of being reimbursed. Why should we? TDOT, sorry. I've got TDOT in my head. It's several different invoices. I think some of them were for um, advertising. $16,000. Let me find this one. A couple to Cannon and Cannon, a couple to TDOT, and the $17,000 one. I'll have to find the $17,000 one. Yeah, no, that's fine. No, we're, we're good. Yeah, we're good. Now, why they weren't reimbursed, I don't, I don't know. Hey. What was the totals of what wasn't it reimbursed? Okay, hang on a second, because... One hundred fifty-one thousand. How much? One fifty-one seven twenty-three. And of course, uh, might as well go ahead and hit the elephant in the room while we're talking about what we may or may not owe Lenore City. Some of you may not know. I think everybody but now does know that that. Uh, we received a letter from the mayor saying that they weren't going to pay their $47,000 for their uh, equalization work from Mike Campbell's office, which is a given. Both cities have always paid their portion. Mike does a formula, and he comes up with a, uh, a bill and, and sends them a bill for their part of, of equalization every four years. And so we got a little letter there from the mayor that says, ah, we're just not going to pay it this year because in 20." 18 or 20 
sometime or another y'all didn't pay something else. I mean, it's kind of getting to be, kind of getting almost be childish, but I, I don't know how you, I don't know how you owe somebody and then send them a bill and say, you owe us, but we're not paying you, so. Well, we agreed to do this years ago, right? They agreed to pay that, too. So, I mean, I'm just trying to hold up our word on this particular issue. I know that's a whole nother one that needs to be addressed. Yeah, and, and so I, I, I think I guess the budget, I'm looking at one at a time. I hope in the budget, I mean, I, the budget committee last month discussed this, and Gary Gary had a, a, some input on that, and the idea was to get the mayor together and so let's, let's, work this thing out. let's work this out and everybody pay their bills and let's move right. on, but uh, I don't think that's happened yet, no, and I think... I mean, uh, I, I would have an issue. I mean, I, if we owe $202,000, I think we should pay this $202,000. The commission before us made this agreement, but I struggle writing a check for two hundred two thousand dollars when he didn't write a check for forty six. So I you know, I would want to my opinion I think we should deduct the forty six. That's not the first time that's happened, is it? Uh, and withholding that? Well the first one come from That's the first time on on that. On, on that even it's not the first time. Right. So and that's why I was hoping that based on my conversation with the budget committee that the two mayors would get together and work this out and, and have Mayor Atkins write his check for 46 and we could work on writing our check for 202. Uh, and okay, so that was, the, that was the agreement. I thought we ended it with Tracy and Amber working right. out all the numbers, but so, now we're waiting on the two mayors to get together? I, I, I don't. I, I can't speak for Mayor Bradshaw, so I don't know what he is. Was what he, he ever instructed or asked to do yes, so? Yes, he was asked to yes, do so. so. Yes, I, I personally asked him to do something. Um, well, you know, this this is not uncommon. They they did the same thing to us on Harrison Road. They come up, what we wind up another two hundred seventy five thousand dollars. We went up nearly half a million dollars in the Harrison Road thing because they miscalculated, forgot utilities, <laughs> some such thing as that. Uh, it's it's just it's it's a theme. It's kind of a, a theme, and uh, we got out of the Harrison Road and we paid the bill, and then they they annexed the whole road in, so it's theirs to maintain forevermore. But uh, I, 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 I think the conversation of paying them whatever we owe, whether it's 89 or 202, there's still a lot of missing links on the 202 part, but that can be worked out. But whatever it is, I think the conversation needs to be a mutual conversation. I agree. What links are missing so she knows what she needs to bring to you? Who? Amber. Yeah, that's uh, who you would be referring to. Why, why, did TDOT, why did TDOT not pay their bills? That's that's a little curious why they chose not to pay one hundred and fifty something thousand dollars on a contract they agreed to pay eighty percent of. Because the original agreement when y'all did the budget was that if they could come to an agreement, then you all would agree no, to no, make no, that. No, 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 that was never an agreement of budget. Mm -hmm. uh, that by what I heard when I was in there, it was. Well, that was not the agreement that? at all. It was Satterfield. I mean, he's not here to, but I know he. That that was a conversation. We there, were, there were many conversations. I don't think any vote was taken on anything. No. Oh, no. Gary's final thing was get the mayor together and let them figure this out while we don't pay our bills. Okay. Well, maybe we need Two to wrongs don't make a right. That's right. Somebody needs to start paying their bills. That's if you right. receive one to your house, you're supposed to pay it. I agree. Take it up with your mayor in the morning. I got to take it up with the people I'm serving with, too. That's right. And, and, and you know, uh, Look, I'll, I'll throw my issue out there. Um, if we've agreed to pay and, and we owe $202,000, I'm going to be the, the first to vote to pay the $202,000. That's a lot of money that's owed. And but it's, we also need to collect our $46,000 that's owed to this county. We owe that to our constituents and our taxpayers. I agree. So we have to collect that $46,000. So do you take it off the top? Or do you wait and, and hope that the city pays it? I think it's cleaner to have a check come to us. And Tracy's going to them. Yeah, we yeah. don't need to be deducted from. No. So from however that has to work out, that, that's that's where I'm at uh, uh, with it. I mean, if we owe the money, I think we should pay the money. But I believe if Lenore City owes us forty six thousand dollars, they should <coughs> we should have the same. Oh, courtesy. I agree. I agree. But I think there's there are two separate issues. Um, I, I don't think you hold one here and, against and that's why another I was, one. Uh, and yeah. that's why I requested and hope that the two mayors would sit okay. down together well, then and we need work, to follow up with and the work two that mayors. situation out together. So well, our mayor needs to follow up with your, you know, the city mayor, okay. the city mayor needs to follow up with our but mayor. That's what we need to do. I, I thought it hinged on Tracy and Amber and 
Yeah. And I, okay, well, I didn't know there was <coughs> the mayors were supposed to meet, but and, and I don't, I can't speak for Mayor Aikens. I don't, I asked I don't the, our, the county, our county mayor to make that phone call. Okay, <clears throat> all right, I guess that's it. Okay, may I ask a question, please? And also, make a correction. So, am I hearing that this is for the mayor to take care of with the mayor of Lenore City? I, I want to make sure that I don't have any other direction from commission. My, my request was for Mayor Bradshaw to reach out to Mayor Aiken and to work, sit down, to see if they could sit down and come to a mutual agreement that the Lenore, that Lenore City owed Loudoun County $46,000, okay. and if Loudoun <coughs> County owes Lenore City two hundred two, how are we going to take okay. care of each other's funds? Okay. I wanted to make sure that I, as I said, I didn't have any further direction. And I need to correct the number that I gave you. Uh, I gave you the wrong number, that $150,000 number. It's 70900 That's what the state did not reimburse the North City on. They sent in one of these invoices is a large invoice. They reimbursed part of it, not the rest of it. Okay, so that would come off the two hundred and two then? Yeah, the okay. total that they didn't get reimbursed on is 70905 Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. And when they figure it out, they'll drag you back okay. in. <laughs> Gary Woodfield. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just ask that uh, uh, this be put on the uh, uh, workshop and, and hopefully for a vote um, on the 7th. Um, Loudoun County Board of Education just did a uh, resolution uh, through our state legislators, and it's uh, the Tennessee Code Annotated 49 that's 6 that's uh, 3115. And, and what it is, it's the state legislators are making decisions on all of our children, especially third graders, yeah. that affects them uh, in the English uh, category. So if they don't make a certain grade, if they're not at a certain reading. test, uh, reading the state legislators have the right to automatically hold those children back. Uh, I talked to Mike, uh, and what that would do, is that would cost the county, he said last year about 150 five kids and we'd have to hire 13 teachers in order to maintain those kids that have been held back. So they have written a, res a resolution to state legislators asking them to reconsider their bill to allow our educators, our parents, uh, and our um, administration to determine if a child needs to be held back in Loudoun County uh, instead of the state legislators making those decisions. So I just ask that we copy the Board of Education's uh, uh, resolution that they wrote and sent to our state legislators, confirming <coughs> that we as county commission support our Board of Education and ask them uh, to accept our resolution also. Okay. I agree with that 100%. And that passed unanimously? Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think I think every school board across the state of Tennessee yeah. has tried to reach out to the legislature and say, you all missed this one bad. Yeah. Well, especially with COVID and the no schools being closed yes. down and we're yeah. punishing kids That's for right. things that, that they could you, not you, you fail one test the whole <laughs> year, no matter what you did, if you fail that one test, you're retained in third grade. Retained in third grade. It's crazy. Well, I know what it's Lenore crazy. City Schools are doing. They're targeting those kids and trying to catch them up during the year so they won't have to be retained. They also so sent a letter to the legislature. They this. have. They have. They, they sent have. it a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Thank you. Okay. Next up, every year, well, every four years, rather, the county commission has to adopt the Loudoun County procedural rules for the commission meetings. And basically what changed this year is the names of the commissioners, the chair, the vice chair. It basically says the same. I would ask, I won't read you all through it, but between now and November 7th, read through it. We're going to have to approve it on November 7th to be in compliance. There's no other changes except the names? <clears throat> That's all. Okay. Nothing changed. Okay, so that'll be on November 7th. I won't read it. It's in your packet tonight. Go through it. Any concerns, let us know. Commissioner Waller. I just want to um, discuss stormwater runoff, because I know in my district there's a neighborhood, and we always talk about runoff in my district for whatever reason. I think we have 25-year detention ponds, 20-year flood detention ponds in my district. 
I know Knox County is 100 acres, so I want to ask the Planning Commission to look at it and see what their recommendations are, whether we bump ours up to 100 or 50. Um, what we've got is not big enough, I'll guarantee you that. Yeah, so I just got to ask the Planning Commission to look into that. <coughs> So there's no action we need to no, take. No, yeah, we well, need to vote to send. We can vote to send, or can start a plan. Either one. Okay, we can just we'll look at it, put it on there for November seventh. We'll, we'll see what I have looked at. It's there. Thank you, Tracy Blair. Uh, thank you, sir. The budget committee discussed several items related to Arthur that you will discuss after um, you finish your agenda this evening. Also, the items that will appear on your November agenda are related to. The Board of Education purchasing property uh, mm. off of 321. Uh, the budget committee, re the budget committee recommends that the cost is one million eight hundred twenty-five thousand. It will be by means of capital outlay note. Um, I will, um, in the exploration process of uh, the structure of the financing, um, look at paying it off rather quickly with a short amount of years. But I'll also explore whether or not it's worth it for the county to uh, structure it in a manner that it could be rolled into a larger capital outlay no, I'm sorry, a larger bond issue once they build the building. I think it'll be shorter term, but both were discussed at the budget committee, so I'll check into both. There will be amendments in several different funds. I've got the spreadsheets. I will distribute them after the meeting <coughs> uh, because I didn't get here in time to distribute them prior to. You will receive your resolutions um, for each one of those funds in your packet of information. I'll make sure that Tammy receives those. I think that's all. Thank you. Well, I got one other thing. I know that there's a group that's been working on election storage and um, extension office space on the back of the courthouse. And that, I think, pretty much said Annex. County, county, Annex. County, county, county building. building, sorry. <laughs> Get late. We not even got started yet. Yeah. <laughs> the other two projects are, and it was going to be one giant storage facility attached to the library, but then they wanted to move it behind the county office, which is fine. So now there's two other projects: the historical records on the side of the library, and then the larger storage facility behind the county office building, where each office holder will have storage space. If there's stuff up in the clerk's office, they can put it back there. If there's stuff from Steve down at the court, they can put it in there. I guess there's been some miscommunication somewhere along the way to where they want to focus on the election and the extension office and the library piece. My understanding was they wanted to focus on the big storage first while they're doing the addition on the back of the office and then look at historical records once we have our massive storage put in. So what do we want to do in terms of direction on that? Are you on that committee? He is on that committee with me, yeah. and we, we weren't at the last we meeting, were we? So this last meeting that came up is I did 1,200 square feet on the addition of the library for historical records. We don't need anything that big. Well, I was at the last meeting of the election commission office. If you go way back, the first conversation was about a big storage <laughs> building right behind the county building. We've got a very large flat area out there. And it would be a, a climate control, very secure building because we have these voluminous loads of records that we have to keep sometimes for years, sometimes forever. And there's just no space to keep them. The courthouse burning down is what's brought all this to light because everything was just jammed in the basement down there. So much of it floated away and some of it's been salvaged. But anyhow, so the election commission office extension is, is underway. That was kind of the first and get go. So now we start talking about. Oh, like he said, off the library. And I guess on the front end, Gary and Adam, I don't know, there was talk about the whole big storage thing being over there, maybe. Being over there, and that, and that just wasn't. It wasn't going to be a good fit. Yeah. So so the idea was to bring the big storage place back behind the county building. Great place for it. Everybody have access to it, drive right up to it, the whole nine yards. But then we find out that some, for some reason, there's still this 1,200 square foot building attached to the library and that's going to be all historical stuff, our old leather-bound books. And I think part of the missing question was, we don't even really know for sure what we have to put in it. We know what we need to put back in the big building. We, All the office holders will tell us what we need for back there. So I think that one had been decided. Was you at the last meeting? Oh, no, I was at 
there. Buddy was there. He's not here. Uh, it was decided we just put that library one on hold till we got these other two done. Then we know exactly what we need over there. But did you well, I, think, I think they kind of have to be simultaneously because you're going to have, once the courthouse is done and we're moving in, you know, the bills are going to start rolling in. Well, I, I we got a lot of time. But, but, but there's going to be a ton of but excess I, storage behind the county office building. So historical records can sit in there for a minute until we see what exactly needs to go over there that, that the public's going to want to see on occasion. Maybe y'all need I, to have a meeting. And I don't totally disagree with that as long as it's a minute. No, I, no, I'm not, I agree. No, I'm, I agree. I mean, yeah, it can't be, it can't I don't, be I don't think we need to just, take months. right. I'm just saying we need to figure out what is historical because right now, no one can, I mean, Miss Hunter may be able to, but well, I, I, mean, I don't know of anything that's, hey, this is truly historical and it truly needs right. to be kept for public viewing versus here's all our old court records that somebody might want to look at every 10 years that can go in the regular story. And I think that part of the, the missing pie on historical records is that we have not brought in the historical society folks so that we have that monitor and keep keep historical records. Or we haven't brought in Miss Hunter to kind of see what we need. Oh, we brought her in. She's coming she's, in right now. Here, up. Come on in, Pat Hunter. But she she not, needs 100,000 square feet. But she's not been at our meetings to see how we're going to, to do all that. So we, I don't think you we all need, do You all need to have a meeting on that one. My name is Pat Hunter, and I am the chairperson of the Public Records Commission. And we have been excluded from this discussion. And this is absolutely horrible because we are the... the the commission that is in charge of the archive records. And, you know, what I heard at the last meeting was to use the little room that's currently being used for public records, for older records, to be the new room. And that's not what we were told from the onset. We were told we were going to have one room to display the old records. And we have lots of them. Matter of fact, I will be going to the storage facility tomorrow because we're in the process of sending the records off. The um, insurance company wants to get started on that, but there's one issue. If we get them restored and cleaned, where do we bring them back to? They have to be in a climate control. Um, moisture has to be controlled, also lighting. So we have to put those somewhere. So we get them sent off, and I'm going to go tomorrow to see uh, what we do. Then where do we put them? So we need to talk about that. And I don't know that we're going to have enough room, because I know that that small room that you're talking about using now is not going to be sufficient. And I can see how the librarian does not want to give away her space in order to address the old archives. So we do have to have a discussion, and I hope that the Public Records Commission is part of this discussion. Okay. Thank you. And there are lots of very important records. You know, I was talking about Mr. Sproul. Uh, he's part of the history. Uh, so is Judge Russell. There are so many components to our historical records, not just the 1890 records, and there are lots of them. So we need to get them clean, restored, and brought them back so the community can enjoy them. So I hope we're included in this discussion. Anything else? <coughs> nope. I think Gary and Adam better get together and have a meeting. Yep. Well, you're right on that, Gary. Or whoever else is on. I don't know who's on that one. We had Satterfield. Who else was on that one? That was it. Okay. You want to take a five minute break or you want to go right in now? I'd say take just a quick bathroom break. Go ahead. There's still some more uh, uh, food back there if anybody didn't yeah. eat. I don't know who all Tammy thought she was feeding. Yeah. Uh, Tracy and uh, Aaron. There's, there's food in okay. the break room if y'all want to eat. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. This is what Tiff's students do. We 
What do you know what we are and what we've done to try to stop? Okay. We have uh, no no no. I want to add more conversation. He, he has a great concern about well they come out of hard and bounds.
I had come to say, we don't need to be talking about one penny over $5 million because that's all we have in the bank. Tracy will update us at this point saying that in a day or two, we'll have the other $5 million in the bank, right? Correct, Ms. Langley? Yes. The uh, Treasury is sending us emails, I guess the last two weeks, with constant reminders that's basically saying, draw down the rest of your money. It'll, it will be done this week. Um, so probably by this time next week or maybe by the end of next week, the whole $10 million will be in the account. Okay. Uh, and true, half, million, uh, half of it is here, not half million, half of the allocation We've already drawn down, did that about February last year. It's in an account, and it's, it's kind of being treated like bond proceeds. When we get bond proceeds, it has to go into a separate account, not commingled with any other county funds. It's the only thing that can come in and out of that account, even the interest. It, it goes to that account. The trustee chip sets that up. And so we're handling this the same way. So the um, five million is there. Um, when this was first approved by the federal government, there were, there were so many requirements. There were, there were several different areas that funds could be spent, and there were lots and lots of requirements. And those still exist. I don't mean to sound like they don't exist. They still exist. It's just that when the final ruling came out several months um, later, um, I guess it was close to a year later, um, Counties and municipalities can now spend up to $10 million in um, what's considered revenue loss. $10 million can be spent on any government expense. Anything that you can... Recurring? Any government expenses. So recurring would be it. That would be up to commission. Yeah. And of course, recurring, well, you need to think about that because once the $10 million runs out... Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, I pulled some of the language out of a summary of the, um, of the final ruling, a summary that was prepared by the Treasury. And there's some of that language that's in the resolution that you adopted at the last meeting related to the Sheriff's Department vehicles, and that's exactly why I did it. I think something is in quotation marks, and it says government expenses. You can spend it on anything that you can spend property tax on, $10 million of it. County audit. Well, through the state comptroller's office um, called several months ago, they are encouraging counties and municipalities to file as much of, of it under revenue loss as possible. They are, they, they're encouraging it, and I understand why. It gives the county greater flexibility um, for whatever is filed under revenue loss. We don't have to comply with federal, even procurement. We have to comply with our own procurement guidelines federal. It, it just gives you a lot of flexibility. The county has already approved half a million dollars for Sheriff's Department vehicles. You can do that under revenue loss. You can't do that in any other category um, because that's considered um, public safety expenses, anything related to public safety in, in that case. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. And so for whether or not commission considers uh, discussions this evening or as we proceed um, with subsequent meetings. What do you consider, okay, let's just talk about five million or talk about two million, you know, talk about 10 million. That's up to you. And I think that's the whole purpose of this meeting is to come up with some kind of process for the whole thing. We're going to have a number of people, entities come. I don't, anytime there's money, people come, people want money. And there's a lot of good needs out there. And at this process has been going on now for a year, I guess, since all this came up. And it was so great. The, the restrictions were so hard on it when it first got it. We couldn't do anything with it. Water, sewer, broadband, blah, blah, blah. We don't do any of those. Well, they took it off. Now here we are. Uh, I think tonight, and I really hate we're missing so many people, including the mayor and including Satterfield, this is for us to decide how we want to spend this money. What's the process? Do we want to contribute, uh, make contributions to nonprofit organizations? Do we want to use it for 
countywide projects? Do we want to use it for district projects? I mean, this is what we have to come up with is our process for how we're going to handle essentially giving out, spending $10 million. Do we just throw out ideas? Because I have a great... <laughs> Yes, I have. Can, on that. No. Yeah. <laughs> well, the sheriff's department's done got half of it, so move on from that. There, there's, there's the first five million that we already have. So one theory, my possible suggestion, is half a million dollars for countywide things, whether it be cars, the raises, cameras, whatever. That's already gone though, right? A half a million dollars. We. Right, but I'm, but I'm saying that would come from the five million total. In addition, Tracy's going to no, tell you about six million. That would be the million. first five million dollars, including the stuff we've already spent. The, okay. the longevity raises, the cars. What was the total cost of the longevity raises? <laughs> Three hundred ninety thousand dollars. Then the second five million dollars would be broken down into tenths, and each commissioner would have roughly half a million dollars to spend in their district on projects they saw fit. I think that's a wonderful idea. That's your longevity. Which one do we pick? The first one is what we did for the pay raises. On, the, on your left column, okay. yeah. the, the right column is what the uh, what it would be if we did exactly like the pay raises in, in July, or if we added 30% to all of the bonuses so that the employee, if they were going to get a $1,000 bonus, instead of paying the Medicare and, and Social Security and stuff out of it, we're going to make it 30% higher so they actually get the whole thousand dollars. The budget committee chose to stick with just like we did with the raises. Uh, essentially taxes, we all have to pay our taxes. So that that's, but that's still up in the air to be discussed. The difference is $107,000. If you see that line at the very bottom down there, that's the difference between what it would be from the pay raises to what it would be if we just stick with the pay raises or if we do the additional 30%, that's 107,000 additional dollars. And if I can add one thing about premium pay. Um, there was some desire by at least some commissioners, uh, I heard it in budget committee, that the, it, it would be nice if the employees could have this before the holidays. Yes. If that's true, if that's what commission wants, then this is one item that would need to be on your next agenda. It needs to be approved in November for that to happen so that payroll can get that done. Okay. And I think that's not a problem. We'll definitely vote on November the 7th. November 7th. So, if Tracy. You, which one are you kind of? Well, the budget right? committee went with the standard one without the additional 30%. Ultimately, I guess it would be what this body determines. So, I don't know what to tell you on that. I, I, I'm good with the, with the less than the extra 30%. <coughs> We've got a spreadsheet, kind of a running spreadsheet here. And besides that, I'll have to know just so I can prepare a resolution for you to do that. Um, at least commission's feelings about it, if you don't mind. <coughs> so do we actually need to try to, I don't know that we can vote without special call. We no, can't no, vote. She can doesn't need a vote. I, I didn't mean a vote this evening. I just meant um, a general consensus of what, yes, yeah, some direction. Well, I mean, budget committee recommended the, the original proposal, right? Correct. So not yes. So I mean that's three hundred ninety grand that we've already promised them. Does anybody have a problem with that? Well, I mean, my only thing is, is it's one hundred seven thousand dollars in the scheme of things. Gotta go quick. <laughs> I know, but the way the economy is and the way people are struggling now. But I think. Yeah, I mean, and I and I see exactly what you're saying. Hundred seven thousand dollars. It doesn't sound a lot. You know, it, it's it don't sound a lot when you sat fast. <laughs> but I mean, I'm thinking. You know, I want to give everybody as much bonus as we can. But also, we've got to consider our rescue squad. Yes. We have got to consider. You know, the sheriff has brought up some uh, about body cams and car cams and. Scanners. And the scanners. I mean, we're in a dang war with the dope coming into this community oh, and going into our jails. We've got to consider that. And when we start talking about an additional $107,000 for employees. Well, I mean, I mean you can easily make the argument if, 
if, if not 30% more, why not just 50% right. more? That's, I mean, where do you kind of stop? Because 30% take care of, I mean, that takes care of the taxes, yeah. insurance, and everything. You would, you would get that figure. If 20 plus years, you're getting two grand. 19, right. 10 to 19, you're getting 15. And that, that's what it would mean. You would get the, the full amount of what it's saying. Whereas, actually, Tracy, it's really not being called a bonus, right? No. It, it's can't. for technical it's, reasons. It's called something it's else. It's premium pay. Okay. So uh, one hundred seven thousand dollars. That's half the cost of this camera. That's one hundred percent of the cost of those cameras, right? No, no, those are millions. No, that's a million. Million. That's a tenth. <laughs> Sorry, that's a tenth of the camera. Sort so of. why else have we already committed, I guess? Here, let, let me go jump in. Before we go any further, we boys, what we that. talked about when capital projects earlier, when we were talking about the body cams and stuff like that, we were talking about grant money. Have you all tried any grants in yet for the cameras or anything? We've looked at grants and we tried to find grants. That's kind of why I wanted the amendments on my budget so I could have one person specifically looking for grants and applying for grants that has experience. Uh, so he's hiring a grant writer. So I, I'm not, like I said, it's not a mountain I won't die on either way, but I'm, I'm, I'm in the Gary position, I'm in the budget committee position. Uh, it's going to be so easy to peel this stuff away, and, and I'll be honest, a thousand, a fifteen hundred, two thousand dollar premium pay, whatever I'm supposed to call it, is it's not bad. Uh, but if you're going to add thirty percent, I mean, I, I don't know where the argument is to stop. I mean, you know. So I, I, again, Tracy's hunting consensus. I'm, I'm on the I'm on the original. I'm for the original. And my thing is, I, I just think about the employees. I am an employee of uh, government, and I always look at the way I would feel, and that's why I brought it up. Just to, well, y'all, y'all just kind of look at Tracy and give her a head nod or something. She needs to, because we got to get this done. Buddy was, I wanted to pay it all at the first of the fiscal year. Buddy wanted to make it this November thing to make it kind of like a, a time for Christmas type thing. So, but she, we got to vote on it next in two weeks so she can get it done and, and put together that length of time. I'm for the higher amount just for the fact that <clears throat> I feel like when you get that, it just means more. An extra couple, two, three hundred dollars on that bonus, a square number. I, I, I'm just, that's where I stand on that. I don't, I'm not, you know, budget committee made the recommendation, but. but that's fine. Just, I, I'd say let's just come right around the table with this conversation. With the budget committee's recommendation, is this just for the employees' raise and or it, it's for the original without the thirty percent additional? Yeah, that's for their so, and this isn't including the half million that, that we got nothing to do with anything. This, with anything this is else. just the premium so, pay. Yeah, just the if we were to go with the higher, now we're already looking at a million dollars if we add these two. Oh, together. we're way past a million dollars. I'm just looking at these two items. Uh, <laughs> that's right, sir. Yes, that's correct. That's right, so. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's either it's either do the bonuses at the original one thousand fifteen hundred and two thousand, or the bonuses at one thousand fifteen hundred and two thousand plus an additional thirty percent on top of each of those figures. Additional one hundred seven thousand dollars is what it costs. I'm not trying to talk you into it just for clarification. So they actually get that. No. If, they, if you say you're going to get a thousand dollars, you're going to get a thousand dollars. Seven hundred or fifteen hundred ain't twelve hundred. Two thousand ain't seventeen hundred. Whatever. Rosemary. I think I'm for the thousand. Just for the, 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 the first 30%. One? Yeah, the 107,000. Oh, yeah, you owe the 30% of Yeah, give the employees a thousand total <laughs> after everything. I yeah. believe. All right, Whitfield. Look at Tracy. Don't look this way. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, I've, I've been an advocate for our employees since the day I got on county commission. Um, but. Uh, I'm for the original. I would rather see us spend that extra hundred seven thousand dollars on a piece of equipment that we're going to have ten years from now. In right. <laughs> I'm, I'm with the budget committee on this, and not that I'm against the employees. I'm for the employees, but the issue is we have other pressing things besides that. And everybody gets a check. You get your taxes deducted from it. Welcome to America. So what did you hear, Miss Blair? <laughs> Sounds like a split. <laughs> Sounds like a split. So I heard enough to say this so we can move on. 
Okay. I land in the middle. I put the item on the agenda. I'll prepare. Whichever. I prepare whichever. Okay. okay. You can leave blanks. Now, <laughs> leave blanks. related to premium pay, I've got one other question. If you think of anything, you let me know. I've got one other question. Um, are there any limitations on which employees receive this? Employees who are employed the, as of the night you approve it, November 7th, you have to be an employee mm -hmm. for three months. I don't think you'd have to be on your probation period at least, right? Mm -hmm. Some places we don't have that. What if it's July 1st? It, the it, the it, biggest it impact there. anywhere is in the sheriff's department office. That's the one that has the most turnover. I mean, if you're just trying to pick a place where it fits, the new budget cycle started July 1. Jimmy's point, I didn't know if it's a gun or a finger at me, but... Uh, no, it was July 1st, I was still a county employee. Oh, Jimmy, <laughs> Jimmy, 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 don't get the bonus. I'm sorry. Uh, Billy and Jimmy, don't get the bonus. Mark that off. But no, I mean, really, these are the kind of things we ran into in budget. That's right. And of the details say, of this thing. It's all employees who were employees July 1st. What about September 1st? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Those are the ones that are not here anymore, correct, Sheriff? Oh, yeah. Those are the ones <laughs> and so what about so September 1st as the, new, the yes. new term of government? Do we pick so. the, uh, September 1st? That covers, that gets Jimmy and Billy out of getting bonuses right there. I like that part. <laughs> I, I don't on, care. On well, we kind of do. I think have. it's got to be the start of the budget year, June 1st. Well, I, we didn't get that far. Okay. I'm going to be honest with you. I think that the and the budget the committee time. will let you know that uh, when oh, we were preparing the cost of living adjustment, we called another budget committee meeting because as payroll started, you know, um, calculating everything, we had questions yeah. just like this that you just don't realize will right. come up until you're doing it. So and I guess do the officials get it? Uh, I absolutely would say no on the collective okay, fish. So no no. They're overpaid now. Or Jimmy goes out. They're way overpaid and now. I just need an <laughs> effective for <laughs> the employees <laughs> an effective date. You know what? I like September first. September first is good. That's a that. I mean, July one's beginning fiscal year. September first was beginning the new government year. I mean, those are those are true numbers. So. I mean, true dates, so no, I'm not sure which one. Remember, it was put in this year's budget. budget. Yeah. No. Oh, no. Hell, Jimmy. I think you do it the day you vote on it, because I got people you're going to give a thousand bucks to it don't even work for the county anymore. That's We're not going to give it to anybody that's gone. Oh, yeah. that's, you, that's like, if they're gone, they're not getting nothing. Well, we can well, handle that part. Are you talking about their time in as July 1st, their time? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> if they're still with us. If they hired on July 1st and they're still with the county, they'd be eligible. If they hired on July 1st and left July 8th, they're not getting no bonus. But I, I, again, I don't, this is the stuff we've run into in budget. I don't know good answers. Mm. I mean, I think the day the bonuses go up, they must be an employee of life. Mm. Yeah. Well, but what if they came the day before, what if they just got hired the day before? The day and they're before an you? employee. Ooh, that's hard. What's your probation period? Uh, what is the probation period here? Well, <laughs> most of our departments don't have a probation, Chase. Sheriff's office is six months. We do a six month probation period. Okay. Yeah. Really? Oh, we don't have probation period. Tracy? So, how have we done bonuses in the past? Just give them out? <laughs> we've not really ever done this. <laughs> never, never, never. <laughs> give anybody a bonus? We did it. We've blazers. done it a year or two in, in lieu of raises. Okay. Uh, I mean, that's so everybody what, that was working got it at yeah, that point. Okay. Yeah. Well, but that was that was because it was so tight and there was nothing. Yeah. And of I course, employees hate bonuses yeah. instead of raises yeah. that because right. that that doesn't help you the next no. year. So this time we're doing raises and bonuses. And Does this include part timers as well? Then? There are. There is part timers. Seven fifty part timers. Seven hundred five dollars. And I struggle with that because an employee that's zero to nine years is going to get a thousand dollar bonus. But a part time employee, zero to nine years, will get a seven hundred fifty dollar bonus. Well, not even that when you tax them. <laughs> but under your plan, we're not going to tax them. <laughs> we need, we need to, hey. we need to decide. We got this, this. She's going to leave that with generic. This is the details we've got to, we got to work out. And we this this is one little tiny part of the details. You've not heard nothing yet. We got a lot worse than this coming <laughs> tonight. Yes. Oh. I'm gonna say that I'm with the, this one, the 390. 
Even though I am for employees, you just I didn't even say that. I know. I wonder why. You're an exact split right now, Tracy. So the reason I say that is because there is one party that's needed to be designated out in the other places. It's five three now. It's five three. It's five three. Three ninety. I didn't get all. Uh oh. You didn't get it. Yeah, he went with the three ninety. I'm. I'm tight with money. Okay. So July 1st, September 1st, which one is it? What's start date? September 1st. But I also think that the elected officials should get it as well. Well, September 1st will take care of that. <laughs> I know where they work September 1st. <laughs> Sorry, Jimmy. They still deserve to get it because they hold a job. Uh -huh. No, we're the county. Hey, okay. I'm talking about them. Lobbying no, we get it. Not ourselves. Yeah, too, right? yeah, no. We're full time employees? Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> On below part time. Right, <laughs> pull, pull her back oh, here. We're full time employees. Pull her back. September 1. All in favor of September 1? No vote, no vote. I'm fine with September That's 1. Fine. So you're saying as if they have been employed as of September 1st? Mm -hmm. But so they have hired to September still 5th, be here. You're not eligible. Yeah. Okay. They have to still be employed. Yes, absolutely. They got to if be they're hired September 5th, they're September not eligible. 1st. And if they no longer work here, they're not they're eligible. eligible. Yeah. I know. But they're they're hired hired I, just, I picked a date, September 5th. They had to yeah. be They had to be employed by September 1st. Yeah. People just oh. jumping out ahead I just for an example. Date. So you're saying if somebody's employed in October, they don't get it? Yes. Correct. They're still here. They do? Yeah, everybody after September 1st. No, no I'm sorry, the other one. No, if they weren't hired, they, they had to be hired before September 1st. Okay. Yes. Yes. A new employee. So anybody hired that's hired after September 1st does not get a bonus. That That's correct. Mm. That's true. Unfortunately, they'll miss out on it. And as Ch back to Chase, the Sheriff's well, Department's okay. got six months probation. Do you know of any other departments, Tracy, that does a probation period? Does everybody? Some do. I know some don't. I think. Um, yeah. The county yeah. has a policy. Of I just don't know how. Because you can't use vacation or sick time for you. Don't you, you can't you use sick time. You're going to fix that one now. I wish you'd been our last Tuesday night. It was funny. I was thinking, I was thinking about you when it was going on. <laughs> I didn't know ever sent it to the planning commission. When they're hired, they don't have I didn't know. I didn't know it was going to be on there. I wasn't there either for whatever it's worth. Y'all get through enough private conversation down there, we'll move on. What'd y'all decide? I think I should have left with Mary. I thought we'd already decided. <laughs> okay. It's already done. It's September 1st and still has to be employed. They're talking about probation periods. Well, everybody good with what we're at now? So they have to be an employee September 1st. And they have to be a current employee. Correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, and elected, elected officials. officials does not include elected officials. No. And the the lower amount on this spreadsheet that yes. your new director. Well, we're at five right. three right now with okay. two members That's what missing. I so. Well, one of them's on the budget committee. So yeah. Add in that amount. Uh, Make it one, one of them don't have a vote behind this table. Well. Yeah, I'm counting Buddy, but no, he's. All right. But he's, he's saying it's that ability. Yes, 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 yes. He's yes. not here. I was thinking Buddy when he okay. said Okay. Uh, are, are we buddy. ready to move? I think you're too. <laughs> move. So we just did. We spent 390. Here okay, now. what else? Okay. The tally's going. So now, uh, 500,000. 500. Well, she's fixing the tally. It's 390. For the Sheriff's Curses. Department cruisers. Right At the budget committee today, the Sheriff was present and talked about. Well, he's, he, he wants to talk. Oh, okay. okay. He talked about. Yeah, I'd let somebody else present that. In car and body cameras at $1 million. As well as. $1 million. As well as body scanning equipment for the jail at. I put, I put in 200000 That's right. That's, 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 that's with the warranty and everything. Uh, the five year warranty is uh, $203,765. So we're down to seven point nine million. Well, have we didn't all that, didn't we? well, you haven't. You only approved spent seven point nine million. We haven't approved it. Oh, but I mean, we're to that point. Yes, so seven point nine million. million. Yes, a million dollars in cameras. That's, that's what we have. Of the ten left. million, of, we're only talking about the ten. Yeah. Because everything up above the ten, you can't, you cannot uh, spend it according to these guidelines. That's right. 
Why can that ten, why can that above ten? How much is above ten? Four hundred thousand. Why can that be spent on? Why can it be spent on? Four hundred thousand. Why can it be spent on? There are six, seven, eight different categories. I can't remember. Water, sewer, broadband. Uh, no, so it's one of those. It's yeah. one of those. It's one of those. Okay. That might. Hey, did you say nonprofits? Huh? Did I say what? Did you say nonprofits? It can be spent on nonprofits. Right? I have to check. I think so. Well, that'd be a but right it there. would have to meet that way. the we county would have to meet all the guidelines. Whereas if you spend part of this ten million on nonprofits, it can oh, be a know. contribution just like you do in your budget adoption. So how much are we at now? Uh, now y'all understand, <laughs> the only <laughs> thing we've one. approved is right. the cars. The this is a million dollar request, request, a two hundred thousand dollar request, and we're just scratching the surface. Two point one mm -hmm. so far. Okay. Somewhere two point two. Two point. So let's let's pretend those are going to be spent out of ARPA. Let's just pretend that for now. That would leave us the balance to decide how we want to spend that. I can tell you that Commissioner Satterfield has a very strong idea of how he wants to spend some in Greenback. I wish he was here for this, and I'll assure you he wishes he was too. Uh, I've, I've made this statement several times. I shouldn't do this. I get criticized for putting my feet up. Excuse me for the world for putting my feet in the chair. Uh, I, I, I make a joke out of it, but Buddy's pretty well promised about $30 million of it to different organizations throughout Loudoun County, and we were on the verge of having several of them here tonight to ask for money. And that got kind of taken care of because we don't know what. Are we going to give any money to nonprofits? And what Tracy just said a minute ago, and I heard her ask him, Amy, if we have that 400 plus thousand up there on the tip end that we can't use for or want to, if it's restricted, that might be money. We might say we have this much to give out in grants to nonprofits, maybe, if we can use it for nonprofits. Or sewer. Or sewer, or water, or broadband. Does that sound right, Tracy? That sounds right. Okay. But would the, would the rescue squad fall under, fall under a nonprofit? I think so. Yes. In their 501c3. There's yes. another option for that 400 plus thousand. How much are they asking for? How much is the rescue squad asking for? Seven. 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 Seven, seven. 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 seven what? Seven. 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 I thought somebody said seven million. I'm like, oh, hell yeah. No. no. Seven hundred. Okay, thousand. call spin. Okay. Might as well segue right into it. This is one of the other requests that was coming tonight. The rescue squad now is at seven hundred thousand dollars for their building at Sugarland. I thought it was two million. See, I thought, I thought that he said the building was going to be seven hundred thousand, and he had three hundred. Mm -mm. No, I, I didn't hear. No, the, the 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 last time I talked to him, it was the building was. Don't hold me to, to it, but they could get the bare minimum for 1.2, 1.4. And he came in and asked for 700 of it. Was the last I was told. And with that, and if we give that 700, would that automatically give us the building? Or do we already own the building that's sitting right there by the sheriff's department? No. The, sh the rescue squad owns the land and the building. So we can well, buy it from them for $700,000? Yeah, yes. so they were supposed to give it oh, well, to us. Yeah, the yes. agreement was it just give to us if we yeah. give the money for, yes. for yeah. the so land and the building and everything. That. And that's going to be a parking lot, I'm sure, yes. or something else. That's going to be in addition to General Sessions Court yeah. someday. Right. That's right. what's got to happen there. On <laughs> <laughs> the rescue squad. I'm going to fall out of my chair. <laughs> Oh, on July 18th, Bill was at the budget committee meeting. Yes. Were you at that meeting? Mm -hmm. Okay. He was there July 18th. And I'll tell you what I'm looking at. I'm looking at budget committee meeting minutes. So if I've got this wrong, the budget committee approved it. So <laughs> they didn't read it or they think it's right. Um, he said that the building estimated cost is between six and seven hundred thousand, and that Loudoun County Fire Rescue currently has. 300,000 saved for that purpose and is requesting funding assistance from the county from, for the balance. So that's 
So I told uh, I thought. Did somebody say three to four hundred thousand. That's what I thought. I thought that's what that, that conversation was. was. Wow, but seven hundred is what we've been asked for. Yes, that's, that's what mayor's I work besides the building. Based, on, based on those minutes when we were in that meeting, it was four hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, but so that's, that's the something that you need to. Yeah, I guess I didn't read those. I didn't vote for that. I was out that no, day. No, you made a motion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sure, like your help there, Miss well, Blair. And I think, and I think, uh, Commissioner Cohen seconded that motion. Yeah, because even though they've got three hundred, remember they got to equip that building once they get a building. Yeah, that that's building. The other issue, the, just bare bone building. Yeah, I mean, I'm just, point. I'm just basing yeah. mine on the conversation in the budget committee. Well, let me let me go I back to Miss Blair and her memory. And I don't want to say it wrong. I think I get it wrong a lot. Deutsche Bank settlement. Deutsche Bank. How much was that? That 150. was uh, more than that. It was uh, two something. Didn't three we something? Didn't we agree to give that to, toward the rescue squad? Oh, no, no, we did not because we could not. That had to go back to education debt service. That's right, because, because that's that where it came from. That's right. So that's in right. that budget committee meeting, we approved out of ARPA funds four hundred thousand for rescue squad. According to these minutes, um, the budget committee and I'll read the budget committee suggested utilizing ARPA and informed Mr. Hart that appropriations for these funds would be discussed at a future meeting. No action taken. I got you. There, the there you go. See, I did so remember. There was no action, but these were the amounts that. Well, when we was it, Tracy? Was when was July, that? July, July 18th. 18th. Okay. So back at it. So we're body scanners, cruisers, cameras, premium pay. What else have we kind of committed to? Rescue squad. <laughs> Jimmy gave up. Jimmy, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> He's been standing there to talk. He just listened. He said he didn't want to talk. Is there any yard? He put a check mark down. He's mad at the way. Would rescue squad be would rescue squad be seven hundred thousand or four hundred thousand? That's I guess that's something we've got to we got to We've got to clarify. We've got to clarify. Oh, I'm, I'm, I, and I'm just basing my numbers from the budget committee meeting. I'm basing my conversation with other people. Let's just yeah, say seven hundred thousand. Let's say seven number. per se. So what does, that, what does that put us at? If we okay, had seven hundred thousand, how much? Two, two, two point two eight. eight nine. So we have two point two more to spend from the first five million. How much is it? Two point two. Seven point two left of the ten million. Uh oh. Here it comes. <laughs> Tetchler will head the Loudoun County Republican Party. If you never said Tetchler ever again, I'd be the happiest person in the world. What do you say? I'm sure Billy Joe would be too. Well, he don't know what it means. What was the word you said? Tetchler. Probably 10 minutes, got $1.2 million. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Well, it's not going to happen. Yeah, that was the word you said. Can I have that number again? If we add to 700,000? 7.2. 7.2 7.2 is left of the 10 million. We're talking about the first five now, because the second five we've discussed. So there's two point two left of the first five million. million. We don't have the second five yet. No, I mean, that's that's be be but I'm just telling you, we're talking about the first five, because I think the other five should be divided up amongst the tenants. But go ahead. <laughs> you hadn't even turned well, your ideal out you, yet, have you? If, if you look, if you do it that way, then you could look at this and prioritize this and decide what to do and what not to do. And then, if you want to use the other five million. Right. So I'm just going with the first five. So we have two point. Two. Two left. Ish. Mm -hmm. We won't, Billy. Well, then we better stop because uh, Coach Satterfield in here. <laughs> well, no, Coach will get what he wants for his district. We're at 10. He's Satterfield's in here right now. Tell them what Satterfield wants. Well, I don't really we know really what Satterfield I know he's wanting a water project for Tass, and I know he's wanting a sewer project for downtown Greenback. Didn't we just give it to them with the Well, we, we did one task project through the other to the TDEC grant. grant, but this is separate and apart. But I don't I don't want to speculate on that because I really don't know the details on it. And he'll ultimately, get it's, what, for his, he'll get for his district what he wants. It's, a, it's what this body determines the majority decides to vote to do. But I'm going to press back a little bit on the procedure. We're, we're kind of coming to a point now, and there's a lot of people out here ready to come and ask for a lot of money. Are we going to give away money to anything that's non-county operations? Do we? I'm not saying we should or should. I, should. I think Such the money what? needs to be spent on what most affects the majority of this county. 
Okay. And, and I, I affect and I agree, everybody. And I agree with, everybody. with Adam. I, I, uh, you spread this out, it's going to affect everybody yeah. and, and help the county. And then if you split this last five million between 10, and if Rosemary decides she has a nonprofit and that money's good, that's, a, that's in her district. I'm going to pay Lunar City back. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. Please use your part of that. Problem solved. <laughs> she can mark her down real quick. Put it down real quick. I'll make a motion in the workshop. Rosemary takes her and pays off uh, Tony Soprano for all that he wants. You know? Well, now so, I spit it off. It's all gone. <laughs> I mean, she, that gives her the option to do that. Well, and, and again, this body's going to determine what we do. There's no... Well, it's kind of like we... If you, if you were to do something like that, I mean, it would kind of be like, that's my money that I'm giving out to nonprofits and stuff. You know, that's that's not what we want to do either. I mean, as oh, a no, as an individual commissioner... But I'll tell you I what, I, I have roads in my district that need to be addressed yeah. and I know that Billy has such limited funding there's there's certain yeah. projects in my district if it goes that way that's all I'll do with mine is I'll, I'll say yeah, Billy but that's what I'm saying I think we should do something broad and not give it is there anyone opposed to the first five million for countywide projects and the other five hundred thousand dollars for each commissioner to have to spend in their district I like that idea yeah. that gives me and Harold and Rosemary and William and Bill and Chase. A million dollars. A million dollars. But you have big old districts. We too. have big districts. I'm going to build a Bill Jim statue. I'm going to build one. <laughs> the the football field. Field. <laughs> You're going to resurrect the old football field. Oh, bronze, bronze him right there at the fountain. <laughs> hey, Chase, you can just buy the football field. But hey, Bill, I'm going to have a dumb question. <laughs> no such thing. $500,000. How much rubber tech? <laughs> Five, five, five. 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 Five, funding to, to pay for roads we have to, uh, something I would like for y'all to consider before you spread that out and see too late of, yeah <laughs> should have came up here talk to talk to Jimmy yeah <laughs> Jimmy got all your money well, <laughs> talk about about a paint truck. he'll give you money <laughs> Seven years ago, whenever we borrowed some of that deposit money, um, yes. seven or eight years ago now, yes. I bought a tractor. Well, that tractor that we bought then is starting to show the signs of getting beyond feasibility to repair. Um, and as long, as long as it takes to get these mowing machines built and in here, I talked to the Superior County Road Superintendent, he ordered, he ordered five tractors and mowers. Uh, and Took about a year and a half to get. Of course, we're running into that on anything we do anymore. But nevertheless, I would. They're like right to see behind this. Jimmy's. How much does one cost? cost? So what are you asking for? What do you want, Bill? Just come on, let's get away. You're not going to get it, so just spend it out there. We still have $2.2 million. Well, one right, track. He's got to give us a soft story first. just worked out like that. I would like to get two tractors because we was able to use flex that money that was put out there for Del Cotta to Go ahead and purchase one. We purchased one out of budget. I've got a little bit of money left in our uh, equipment budget for this year. Uh, don't know right off the top of my head what those numbers are. We just tractors. amended that tonight. Didn't How you? much does a tractor cost? Equip, I mean. Mm -hmm. $180,000. Each? How so you want yeah. $360,000? Yeah. Sit down. <laughs> <laughs> you have one ass. You have one ass. <laughs> yeah, if you'll let me get two more of them, I'll put blue lights on them. <laughs> you have to take that up with Jimmy. Consideration on that, so you want two tractors, three hundred and sixty, and that brings our total to ding 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 one point nine minus one eighty, one point eight. Something. So we say one point eight and change. 
Well, like I said, if, if that's where all miles go, if we if we got wind up going so, this so way, so the half million is roughly three and a half miles of, of top coat, which would go a long way in my district. Yeah, that's longer than it seems when you're paving side roads. But it is like it like one larger neighbor in my district is point seven miles. What Silver Oak point seven miles? We we ain't paving Silver Oak. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> what Silver Oak about point seven miles? Yeah. I mean, that, like five we walk. it sure did. That's okay. Oak Leaf won't like you know, at all when you pay silver oaks. Well, I'm not saying silver oaks on the list. I'm just saying Billy John and I met with him. So. All right. <clears throat> Tracy, you getting all this down? Erin's got it. Okay. She's all over it. Tracy's gone. Remember she's yeah, she's checked out. I can tell you right now. So she, <laughs> she was 10 minutes late getting the budget committee meeting. She didn't have her act together. It was, it was chaos. <laughs> Is there anything else that we know of? Yes. For the oh great oh, no. budget committee, um, heard a request back in February. I don't know if members of the budget committee remember this or not. Teresa Harold, the director of the health department, came to request uh, ARPA funding to match uh, a grant that health departments across the state are re receiving from the state department. Of health. State is ARPA funding, and the county can use. ARPA fund funding to match the grant. It's $116,400. Um, and it's the use of funds is limited to facilities improvements. So I, I don't really know what building improvements will be done, but that's the only thing that it can be spent on. And Commissioner Mears made the motion to recommend approval upon, upon receipt of additional information, seconded by Commissioner Satterfield in the budget committee. Past that, um, and of course Teresa knew. I didn't vote for that, did I? Sure. Unanimously. Let me see if you were there. Crap! No, yeah. I was really asleep at the switch. <laughs> I, I don't support putting any of our local ARPA funds into a state operation. The health department, state. Uh, the state has more money than any of us does. If they want to add their facility, the state ought to pay for that. I'm not going. To, I'm not going to die on the mountain, but I really do hate when we're talking about trying to spread this across the county. I'm not sure how much. That fits that bill, but my goodness, you got a multi multi million dollar operation down there, and then we're going to give them part of our who owns that building? building? I think the county owns the building, yeah, the county owns the building. it's run by the state, though. Yes, yeah, all it's all done, it all comes through us, we get reimbursed for everything, but it's all a state operation. Have there been any other requests? I got one by phone today. Oh, let me, I'm sorry. Let me rephrase that. And Commissioner Shaver, I'm sorry to interrupt you. You're fine. I know other what you're doing. Other um, organizations have contacted me and or the mayor, but I don't know the amount that they got. But those are not, not for profits? They're That's correct. That's a whole different ballgame, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, I work for nonprofits, so I love them, but you know, still, that's a whole different. I, yeah. So, do we intend to do anything for nonprofits? I mean, I, I, I Adam's mean, idea, I don't think, is a good idea. I think we have a, we have a discussion. What's I mean, my there's, idea? There's $486,000. That, that, I don't know if you use that money to help fund your 700000 at the rescue, rescue squad. squad. What was my idea? idea? Let a commission, each commissioner decide so they want to give theirs to a nonprofit. That was my idea. Oh, was that don't you? Don't blame me. I'm sorry. I, that, what, Adam can't get ideas like that. Uh, I think we have to talk seriously about that four hundred eighty-seven thousand dollars, Tracy. If it's going to be so restricted and we can't use it for anything else, it would make all kinds of sense to use it for either the the rescue squad or if, if whatever. But we know immediately rescue squad we can alleviate three three hundred three hundred thousand dollars right there or, or four hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, four hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, almost yeah. five. Yeah. So, um, related to the four hundred thousand dollars, up above the, the everything above ten. Mm -hmm. Let us brush up on all the requirements. There are many. There are many, and um, we were in webinars about that, but it's been a year ago now, for three months or so. Um, and then when the final ruling came out. Well, everybody's focus changed, and there wasn't so much instruction on, you know, those other sure. requirements. We've got materials, we've got, you know, access to information. Let us brush up on it. We'll especially look at contributions to nonprofit organizations, since that's one of the things that you might be interested in. 
my, my thought is, and I'm taking the rescue squad out of it because they're a whole different animal. Yep. But if you're going to open this up to a Shangri-La Therapeutic Academy variety or a Habitat, or you can say, I think there needs to be some kind of process where all nonprofits in Loudoun County are notified, and everyone has an opportunity to come. You know, at our office, we do a grant panel or a grant process every year. So, I mean, we're about to do grant panels where we can't apply anymore, so it's irrelevant. But $250,000, where everybody applies and submits what they need it for, we all sit around and vote how we're going to divvy it up. So, if we want to sit there and say we're going to allocate $250,000 from nonprofits out of that almost $500,000, we can do that and then say we're going to start a process, you know. Have your applications in by January 1st. We'll get together on the 15th and review it all and then vote the first of February. I, I, I'm just made up a rough timeline. But How I think do you go cool about contacting all the nonprofits in, that, in a nonprofit? public notification? Just that's that plus, I mean, there's guides. Sorry, you can log in to see pretty much every nonprofit in town and see if they're active. I mean, that's okay. I'm, I'll give my nonprofit speech. I think we have some of the greatest nonprofits there are in Loudoun County. Fantastic programs that do fantastic work. I've always though had a problem with us determining who was who, who was the good ones to give to. You get it, but you don't. That panel he's talking about, I wouldn't get nowhere near sitting on that panel. I have always been in the position we shouldn't be picking the winners and losers, and then I'm not even sure we're we should be giving taxpayers money. To an organization, maybe the taxpayers don't want to support, or vice versa. We didn't, and they do like that one. So it, it gets real weird. I've always had a problem with how we do our nonprofits. Adams, every every year he kicks this thing around about we need to put a fixed amount on our nonprofit budget, and that's all we're going to do because it doesn't do anything but go up every year because it's so hard to say no. We all want to be benevolent, but we're being benevolent with somebody else's money. This federal thing's a little bit different. It's a one-off, it's a one-time, but it's the same thing. We're still going to pick out of out of 50 nonprofits that do great work. We're going to pick five. Right. And how do you how do you do that? I don't you know, know how you do that unless you give all $100 a piece. And at the end of the day, I'm I'm with Van. I don't believe in taxpayer dollars to nonprofits. And again, I work for one, so I mean, um, I think we have to decide that. So if you want to make it, so. if you want to make it where it's a non-issue, you say no nonprofits get it. Because, I mean, if you don't want to pick and choose, you're going to piss off somebody. Speaking to Commissioner Shaver's uh, thought that there should be a fixed amount, and, of course, this is probably not ARPA. This is budget consideration. That there's a fixed amount for, for nonprofits. There are counties that do just that, mm -hmm. and they do it. They tie it to property tax. And it's ro it rotates. It's number of pen or, yes. They'll get different ones each tax year. Pennies, that value. This is how much we will contribute to nonprofits. And then they go through a process of determining which, but there's a fixed amount that some counties do. But that, that part of the discussion would be doing budget preparation, something for the budget committee, maybe to consider in next year's budget adoption. So here's, so here's the question Rescue Squad aside, any money for nonprofits out of this 10 and change? We'll start down there. <laughs> What was the question? <laughs> Are you ready, ready y'all? Uh, Out of this 10.5, roughly, uh -huh. is any of that money going to nonprofits? I think it'd be easier just to say we don't we don't involve the nonprofits, but wouldn't be a fight for me. It would just be hard to pick and choose. I'm not going to disagree. That's, I mean, not that they're not all deserving, or some are deserving. That's the downfall for me right there. You got 20 sitting here, you're going to give five up. You give to Habitat and then the Boys and Girls Club, or, you know. We could give the whole 10 million away from nonprofit if, oh, if yes, we were wanting to be. But he has. Well, he has, but he don't, he don't have a vote, fortunately. Trouble is, the rescue company, it, Rescue Squad is a 501. It's different. They're different. It's I mean, different. They, that, that's a service they're provider. That's a county, county, provide the county, county wide service. So I don't, even yeah. though they are nonprofit, I don't consider them that. Right. They're nonprofit they're, they're out just to, to, to And get we do the some. fire departments differently on budget if you look at it. Yeah. Correct. All right, Tracy Blair, what else do we need? Well, no, we're talking to the rest about nonprofit. Yeah, I'll answer the question. I'm sorry, I thought we were <laughs> Bill? Oh, uh, if we do, I say the 486, and we figure out if there's 30 
just to keep from picking if there's 30. Mm. We give them a certain amount. That's tough. The same. Well, yeah, there'll be people starting one. I know I'm going to start one. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm, it's, I'm as non-profit as you get right now. Man. You got one, Dusty? You got a non-profit? Okay. Yeah, so one you're one saying one. divide the 486 evenly among all the Every If we do anything, okay. that would be okay. my... But you're not pressing to do anything. No. Okay. No. no. Well, William. Just the 486. Uh, I'm along the line of what Chase was saying. I'm, I agree with and support the nonprofit organizations, but I think the money could be better spent throughout the county to where all the taxpayers would be supported. An argument for many of the nonprofits is what we do supports all the taxpayers of Loudoun County. We save the taxpayers of Loudoun County a lot of money. I, and I'm just this is just generic. Uh, what what nonprofits do we give to now? Do we, we've really cut back there, in recent years. Yeah. Is there five? Is there ten? Oh, there's there's CAC. There, okay. Uh, Good Samaritan. Good Samaritan. Casa. Okay. Casa. Casa is a uh, a collective payout. Yes. Costs comes through a fee. Sorry. I, without the budget in front of me, I, I couldn't right. tell you. There's... Quillen, um, if you look in your budget document, you okay. see the note book. Okay. Toward the front are all the resolutions. It's, okay. it's all there's there. the appropriations resolution, then the tax levy resolution, and then there's a third resolution. It's a nonprofit. Okay. They're listed. They're listed. Okay. Maybe there's like five or twenty or um, I, I, it's, ballpark. It's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But it includes the fire departments. It includes EDA. Okay. They, you know, that was here. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Rosemary. Man wants to give him some. Yes. No. Um, <laughs> it's, it's tough. It's it tough. is tough it is because. Tough. <sighs> Some of the foundation needs I, to I know it's hard for nonprofits to raise money. Huh. I know, especially in the way times are now, mm -hmm. nobody has money to donate like and, and that kind of thing. I'm, I've always been a big child advocate. I believe in helping children. Uh, so there's some nonprofits that, that, um, that I would lean toward. But, um, but then again, you know. Uh, do we use that money for that, or do we use it for the other things? Uh, it, it's tough, um, and it sounds like you all are supporting some of the the nonprofits that that I think are very important to Loudoun County already. So, I guess <laughs> I didn't really answer your question. <laughs> yeah, that was about as non-answering as there. Um, some of my friends are for it. Some of my friends are against it. I'm going with my friends. So. Friend. Um, I could take it or leave it. <laughs> I would Hopefully say probably, good. probably toward no, because it sounds like we're supporting a lot of good ones right. already yeah, that need to be supported. Uh, so. No, my answer, answer would go. Uh, my answer, my answer we're would be. We're supporting twenty three. Uh, definitely twenty three. Twenty three. If we want to support a nonprofit, we support the county residents nonprofit, which is the rescue squad. I, I'm totally on board with the rescue squad. Well, she said we're supporting Harris, Well, you can't count all those because 911's in that. I uh, got 911, Rarity Bay, Fox some, All the fire training, departments you got to take out of that. Sweetwater Creek Shed, <laughs> Visitors huh? Bureau, <laughs> Economic Development, <laughs> Riverside Cemetery, <laughs> Child Advocacy, <laughs> Little Tennessee <laughs> Valley Education Co-op, <laughs> Loudoun County Community Channel, the TV. Give them, give them the cherry. Mm -hmm. What's that? Give them the cherry. Uh, Mr. Chairman, what are your thoughts on this? <laughs> I'm just telling you what they are. No, they're, they're a fire department. Yeah, the fire department. I left them out. We're going to give to a nonprofit. Give to the rescue squad. Give that money to the rescue squad. Mr. Pickle wants some more money. Let him speak. He's going to open up the uh, Billy Pickle Walt Disney World uh, Charity Foundation. Yeah. Um, He's invested, no, apparently. He needs what, another what, machine. What I was going to bring up was, was me, and, me and Commissioner Whitfield, we do sit on the board of Life County Community Fund. That was uh, put together. What is that? Through the mayor's office. You guys gave money to him. You should know. Huh? <laughs> yes, you did. We, uh, we did an, an initial... Twenty-five. The county did an initial twenty-five hundred dollar to who? Check to East Tennessee Foundation. 
Which is my employer. Oh, I thought it, I thought it said community something. It is. Yeah, Loudoun yeah, County it's about, it's Community about, Fund. Yeah. I'll bet I voted no on that one. But also, though, I think the other point part to point out is there are, there's also a Teleco yeah. Village yeah. Community yeah. Fund. Yeah. So, I was just thinking that it is it is tough to say no in an elected body. But if with those two funds being out there to make grants with, have you felt lately that you need to put it somewhere that that might be a place to put it? That over a striping machine? <laughs> Paint machine. Paint machine. <laughs> but rescue squad, I know you're here. I, I was just chief of rescue squad for several years. You want more money for that now? They're asking for seven hundred thousand dollars. I'm talking about him. I'm no. just saying. As the former sure chief of the rescue squad, well, <laughs> assistant chief, assistant, former assistant chief. So, so here's five. my question: That four hundred thousand dollars here at the bottom, four hundred and eighty-five, six, six. Do we just put that straight towards the rescue squad? That was that was being that was that, what was that? Have we they got your machines? We well, don't. We have under seven hundred. Under seven hundred. Placeholder. The placeholder is seven hundred. Do we have Billy Pickles machine in here? Somewhere? Is it for the tractor? Yeah. Yeah. That four hundred. Yes. 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 Three hundred and sixty yeah. 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 okay. for tractor. Okay. One stays in the if I could get the pothole fixed at the front of Ford Road and one fixed right across from my. A house on Ford Road. I could probably support anything you do. Hey, Adam. My thought was you take the you take the four you take four hundred of the four eighty six, give it straight to the rescue squad. If they want seven hundred, you put two hundred with it. You put five hundred back in your kitty. We yeah we've backed up right, yeah, a half right, million dollars. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but Tracy said she's got to find out more details. Yeah. Out Tracy's, six. Tracy's always got to go find more details, and they're awful. They're never good when she comes back. We're concentrating them. on the first ten million, not another four hundred eighty-six. Make sure that money's not gone. <laughs> She'll be gone before that money's gone. Except <laughs> she's not. I know Tracy to a certain that you're researching. I remember now what I was told. <laughs> Just come right back to one point two million dollars for the building. He asked for seven, well, supposedly asked for seven, and he's going to put the money he has saved with that. But that's not what. That's not what he told us. Yeah, about. that's not what he. His told original me. ask was two million. Yeah. It was two million. First time months. he sat down in the room, it was two million dollars. Yeah. yeah. Then he went to a metal that building. Was two yes. three. Yeah. Four years when, ago. when he came to budget committee, he yes. asked for seven hundred and said, "I got three. Can you give me four? If we give money on that, does the with the ARPA money does the building have to be built to the ARPA? Specs? It's coming through county general fund, so we totally avoid any federal entanglements, right? If, if it's given under revenue loss, but if it's part of that four hundred thousand, oh boy, that's a thought, isn't it? guidelines, huh? That's a thought. Well, let's just assume it can be, and then we'll come back from that. It can be assumed what? It can go to a nonprofit, and we're okay to give that. But, but if With it's the Rescue Squad, squad building a building. All I'm saying is that I need to check, but um, anything with the 486000 it falls under all the federal guidelines. Anything with the $10 million, we just follow county guidelines. Okay. There's your answer. There's a potential problem there. Maybe yeah. not, but potential. Just, mm -hmm. If they have to meet federal guidelines, which includes everything from you must hire union labor to you've got to have a place for the uh, the LGBTQ community together. Well, I mean, who it, knows what would be a federal it, guideline? It include, it, 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 you're referring to Davis Bacon. I don't know yes. if they become a sub-recipient of the county. I don't That's know. a whole different beast. That. Maybe just send the four hundred thousand back and say y'all keep that. <laughs> but I'm I do return the sender. One, one thing I would like to now because of the building is such bad. If we can, whenever they build a rescue squad, like. whatever we give, I, I would want the the deed to that property turned over to the county. The whole property, yeah. Property. yeah they Absolutely. already agreed to that. Yeah, I think that's. I think they'll be glad to give us that deed. That was the goal. There'll be a party the day we take it down. I guess. What else, Tracy, do we need to cut discuss right this minute tonight? I, I, I have no idea. We've not pulled an all nine like this in a long time. I know Hugh Willett doesn't want it to end. I can tell by watching his body language. <laughs> right. 
write on paper. <laughs> yeah. We gotta get him another pad, man. Yeah, we'll get him a pad. When you send all this out to everybody, uh, I wanna see the emails that come back. Well, the other the other part we haven't talked about is the, the buildings for this money. The election the election building's coming out of capital projects. Capital projects money. That's right. We just we just zoomed right over that and the big storage right. building's supposed to be coming out of ARPA funds. You got one point eight million. The big storage building. The what big the mm -hmm. outback county mm -hmm. office building. Mm -hmm. That because we don't have any more capital projects to pay for that one, do we? No, I don't think we have enough in capital projects. And I don't think we'll have enough in the 400-something thousand. Based on what our architect told us, I think he's way off. He estimated the election commission bill at $700,000. And it's not half of what your building is. Of course, a lot of years in between. But there's nothing in it except the ag up on one end. So I think they're way off. But, uh, for, we got 400-something thousand dollars in capital projects already put up set aside for that building. Now the big building and the library one, those are supposed to be ARPAs. You got 1.8 million left right here for we don't spend another day. And what's estimated cost between the other buildings? Don't have an estimate. And I don't have an estimate, but and the mayor mentioned the phone cover. system for the county Oh, office I building. forgot about you that. Should, you should have been here. I don't have an estimate. Of, they don't have it yet. They don't well, have it yet. Right? Tough. And it's going to be expensive. Yeah, he had to stand at that podium man's for tonight because that's the magic podium. Yeah. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I think I think we're talking quarter million on the phone system. Excuse me? Uh-huh. For a phone system? It's, go it's going to tie everything in the county together so that they can better communicate. How much? You have cell phones. Oh, yeah. Buddy also wanted a whole bunch of new cameras for all the county facilities. For him to view while he's in the office all the time? I think he can view it on his phone while he's out. Oh, out yeah. doing county work. Yeah, uh, um, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, I, I've yeah. forgotten about those. Well, I think you pretty well burned through ten million. Well, five. Five million. Five million. Five five million. million. We each have the district money. Well, you got the other stuff you just added: the phone system, well, cameras. Do the phones work now in the office building? Yeah, but you can't forward very. Right? If you're able to use the four eighty six. Are you telling them to call another number? You're telling us it's going to cost a million. You're, you're wanting to spend a million bucks for so I'm not wanting to do anything. Hey, Rosemary, you, I'm going to afford you. It's costing a quarter million dollars when I'm going to afford your phone call versus saying call 458 Come on. <laughs> I mean, come on. I'm, I'm, I'm staying Jeez. out of that conversation. I mean, I'm not. That's ridiculous. Well, but you need more cameras, too. Huh. What else, Tracy Blair? Well, I, I, I don't know. We, we, we made some pretty some big, questions. tall decisions here. Did we? Yeah, we did. <laughs> we did. Well, so the premium pay is three ninety. The cruisers half a million. Body cameras nine ninety nine one twenty five. Body scanners two hundred three seven sixty five. Rescue squad four eighty six and two hundred roughly. Billy Joe's two little John Deere's for three hundred and sixty. Uh, health department one hundred and sixteen. And then we get, we have We're not doing the health department. Oh, we scratched that? I, yeah. yeah. Oh, good, good. You good, got good. the uh, scanner for the jail. That was 200000 That's on there. Okay. Body scanner, 203765. And then the two storage buildings, office and the library, for whatever. Whatever. Two Less than one point. Yeah. So I think we spent our first half a million. I, that's what I say. Me and here, me and there. Really big money. First, it's real money. I think he first means five, five million. Ten. He means five, right? Yeah. First five, five sorry. Five. Five. Now, I've already spent the other five amongst us to put in our districts. We're done. So we'll see how all that comes back with the. I don't know. You know, Coach is not here. He's got. Well, he's gave him half a million dollars to spend in the third. And he's in three. Well, he can go fundraise. <clears throat> he already got one. Right. What else? Anybody know anything else? I'm. Tracy's got her finger up. Oh, here it goes. And here's the father. None uh -oh, of this will uh -oh, work. Uh oh. Sit down. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Okay, that's okay. So we can start. We can start removing stuff if you leave. Yeah. Well, okay. That's why he's afraid to leave. He's gone. We can take that off. He's getting his trackers. Yeah, I'm telling you. When when Jimmy goes, the cameras are out. The cruisers, it's all out. It's all gone. We're gonna put more in the county commission districts. So how how will this work, Miss Blair? Will you? Write all this up and uh, bring it back <laughs> next month for us to come I love you people. <laughs> Tammy's got it in the minutes word verbatim, so it won't be a problem. It seems like we've got some questions. 
you know, Loudoun County Fire Rescue. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I need to check on the 400000 How can we spend it as far as, you know, all of these requirements? There are some questions, but we, we also have what you are possibly, probably considering. Oh. Good, I like that. Yeah. Um, I'll check on requirements of the 400000 486. Come on, come on, man. It's 9 o'clock. Let it go. We'll um, um, so check with Bill Hart. I, now, just, I just was texting with oh. him, and I told him he may have to come back and explain himself. Okay. Okay, good deal. Now, besides premium pay, how much of what you discussed tonight that, had, that we have numbers for? How much do you want on the next... The, the November agenda, your commission voting meeting agenda. I, I, I thought everything we just do. Do, you want do, we need to vote on, do we need to vote on cruisers? Cru we're done with We've cruisers. Done, done. We're done. Done. But do we have to vote to move some back into the general fund or something? I guess is my question. Well, what, you've, you've done that. Me. Okay. You've done that. I was, I was, so I was we're here, talking I about one yeah. million for the body and in car cameras, two hundred thousand for the body scanner for corrections, premium pay. I already know. Thank you. Uh, 360000 for the highway department. Congratulations, Billy. Okay. That's what it seems like we got here that you discussed that we got numbers to that. I'd like to have one. I don't have any questions. Put it on November like 7th. It's probably when they printed them. Put it on the next agenda. I, I would like for it to be on the To vote on 1st of November. To vote there will on be a seven. resolution for all 20 November I'm at the first meeting of November. Yes. November 7th. November 7th. Oh, you sure. I, don't I may have missed that one. All the items. We'll do a resolution for each one <coughs> so that what's resolution. approved is very, very clear. You'll be lucky to have that resolution done if you started tonight on it. You'll be lucky to get that resolution done by then if you started tonight on it. On the items that we yeah. just, yeah. what is it for? One, two, three, four? Yeah. On those four? Okay. Oh, no, that's, that's good. Okay. I'm <laughs> worried about that 406,000. <laughs> this, this is big doings, guys. This is a big it deal. Is. And And when Hugh tells everybody what we've done, I think we're going to hear some pushback from some directions. But that's what our responsibility is to do, is to make the decision. Yep. There is one thing oh, that no. I look Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, that's okay. I'll just. What is it? No, what is it, Tracy? Don't listen to me. Here's why y'all can't do any of what you talked about doing. Go ahead, tell yeah. me. <laughs> it's what I do, you know? <laughs> okay, there's one thing that, um, after I talked to Amy, actually, and I completely agree with her, um, don't know why I didn't think of it before, these expenses need to be in the fund 171. And what that affects is the half million dollars for the cruisers. Um, they were approved in 101 in the sheriff's budget. I would like to put that in a sub fund in capital projects, and the name of this sub fund is ARPA. And the reason that that's better is this is this will span years. You know, it'll span two or three years. And if we create a sub fund, we can always go directly back to our records for that sub fund, and we got what we did. But if it's mixed in with the county general fund, we have to hunt and peck to find it. That will not be true with the premium pay. Uh, wages are paid out of county general, highway, libraries, and convenience Never center. Worked. So wages are what they are. You know, we'll keep a spreadsheet for that. But for everything else, it will just be easier to keep up with, to pull for audit, to pull for the treasury when they come, if it's in 171. So I will make that recommendation. If well, anybody has any questions seven. about that, please let me know. <laughs> So long term is that all? Long term or this this premium pay, body cameras, body scanning, scanning and trackers. That would be the four on the on the agenda for the program. <coughs> and can Bill Hart come and talk to us? He said he'll be at the next bus meeting. That's next month. That'll be after the November. Does 7th. he want to come talk to us at the beginning of that and let's vote on it? No. No? No. 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 Let's hear something. That's, that's fair. No, that's fair. That's smart. Okay, budget meeting so for not hundred thousand. Motion to adjourn. The cars. <laughs> I know you can't. What are we doing with the money for the cars? I wouldn't leave yet, Jim. I'm trying to adjourn. We're just waiting on you, man. Chief. It'll be November twenty-first at four o'clock. I got a question.
the ARPA money. I got a question for Jimmy. Session. Are you ever going to? You I know your predecessor would. Are you going to enforce the bicycle laws in the 5th district? You shall not impede traffic. Body cam scanners, tractors. All right. Yeah, that was just keeping up. This is already the. That's out for the next one, so all you guys do so we're done. That was a good call yes. on the church from Lake, kid. We're done. Shut her down. Good thing you showed up in it. How many pages did you write? Thank you. Yes, that will be on your agenda. I didn't hear Jimmy. Jimmy. What about the bicycles? We had a two or three run over here in the bicycle. Write them tickets, man. <laughs> it's in the law. Shell not check? impede traffic. Thank you. Thank you. See you guys.